Welcome, everyone. Okay, welcome to our regular city council meeting. Uh, it's Tuesday, Ju June 27, 2017. <laughs> And we're located at Veterans Memorial Hall, as usual, for our city council meeting. And for the record, all council members are present, and we'll call the meeting to order. Um, and to start off, if we can all uh, take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. And uh, next on the agenda are Pledge of Allegiance. Craig, will you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Greg. Uh, next, um, closed session report. Nothing to report because we didn't have any closed sessions. Thank you. And with that, we'll move on to announcements. And I uh, just want to start off on that. Um, first off, I just want to thank Craig. Thank Craig, Craig um, uh, as our acting um, city manager, I just want to thank you for your hard work. Um, you done an exceptional job. I just want to give you a um, all the thanks and accolades that you deserve. It's, you've done, stepped up and done a great job, so thanks very much. Yeah. So real quick, um, I've got to respond to that. Thank you. Um, second, it, it, it's not just me, certainly. Um, I may have helped coordinate some things, but certainly all the department heads collaborating on you know, driving processes forward and completing projects and, and completing everything within their respective purview. Um, also, a special shout out and thanks to Sandy Martin, our budget and accounting manager, who took on some of my yeah. burden through finance uh, related activities. So, yep, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Craig. And um, also, want to just give a shout out and thanks to all the department heads. Um, you know, through the transition, everybody's stepped up and they've just done a, an exceptional job. So, thank you. Um, and also, um, now we have a, uh, I just want to make an introduction. Um, uh, Marty Lamelli um, has been selected as our interim city manager. That's on our agenda tonight, and uh, we'll speak to that. But just wanted to do a, a brief introduction. And um, Marty's uh, formerly a city manager uh, down in Southern California with the city of Laverne, um, served there for 23 years. Um, also served as interim city manager at the cities of Irwindale, La Puente, and Upland. And um, we'll hear this this staff report later on in the evening. I just want to make that, that brief announcement and, and introduction then. Great, thanks, Marty. And uh, and with that, uh, next on announcements, we have uh, as a subcommittee, um, Mr. Heading and I sit on the subcommittee for the aquarium, and uh, we were asked to meet earlier, um, uh, two weeks ago now. Uh, it was the previous week, and um, so the aquarium folks met down um, uh, down on the waterfront, and with the USDA, there were um, folks there. John can speak to that as well. Uh, it was just a um, kind of informal um, uh, get together uh, with the aquarium folks and the USDA folks that were actually going to be writing the loan, uh, underwriting the loan for the aquarium. So as uh, subcommittee members, we were down there in support. Uh, Cindy Jaseth from the planning uh, department was there. And uh, just a, a just a brief discussion to just walk, walk around the site and look through that. Uh, very positive uh, conversations with everyone. And um, that's that's about all we have to report on that. And those are all the announcements I have, and I'll look to my left. And Matt, for any announcements? Well, yes, um, I'd like to make an announcement. First of all, I'd like to um, welcome um, Eric Hendersby back from his trip. Um, he decided to come back from South Africa, so welcome back. And since he is back, um, I wonder, if, Eric, if um, you can give us an update on, um, it wouldn't be uh, city council without me asking you about the dredge operations. So maybe you can tell us, let us know what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. Yeah, I, it's gonna be sad, but I'm not gonna be able to make this report anymore. I just have to sit over here and be quiet. Um, so 
Atna, as you know, the, the Yakuna left, and I'll give you some stats on that real quick. Um, so Atna Design Build is back up and running. They're dredging today. They've got a couple high spots that they're getting off our office and out in the middle of the channel, kind of off Coleman Beach. Um, they've completed the Morrow Channel, which is the channel down by Tidelands and off the south end of town. The Navy Channel, which is basically off of our T-Piers and to about Target Rock. They're finishing that up today. They're projected to be finishing that up today, and they'll be gone out of there. And then transitioning over into the Sand Trap, which is the area between the South Jetty and that little inner groin jetty on the end of the um, Sand Spit. And they've got about 110,000 cubic yards in there to do. Um, they don't have a time estimate yet, but they are anticipating using pretty much all the time they need to August 31st, which is where their contract goes to, to get that done. So they'll be in there for a while. Um, fortunately, they'll be a little further away um, from town, so they'll be able to operate at night without hopefully having any noise issues in town. Um, but again, they should be moving. It'll take them probably three, four, or five days to get moved out there, so you'll see them move on out. And then with the Aquina, to just kind of give a recap on them, uh, they moved almost 200,000 cubic yards, 198,561 cubic yards. Um, in the harbor entrance and immediately inside, there's about 95,000 cubic yards that it removed. And then the main channel from, you know, roughly that sand trap area all the way into about channel number, marker number eight, where the, the channel does a 90 degree turn into the harbor, was about 103,000 cubic yards. And the interesting stat of all their time here that was contracted from leaving Portland, Oregon, to get down here, dredging, and then going home, including the transit time, um, their effective time, actual digging, was 81 percent and change. So um, I've never seen these, these statistics before, but that just kind of impressed me as, wow, 81 percent effective digging time. That includes their, their dumping time, um, which is not considered digging time, and, and at, at the dock for fueling and crew changes. So all those time included. Um, operating 24-7, they're 81 percent effective, which is pretty good. So <laughs> that was interesting statistic. <clears throat> thank you. All right. Thanks, Red. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a week from today, we're going to celebrate so the birthday of our country, yeah. July 4th. And Morro Bay, as always, has a full day of family activities. Um, first thing in the morning be the 8th Annual Morro Bay Mile Skateboard Race. Starts at the high school at the west entrance. Uh, if you want to race, show up at 9 o'clock to register. Prizes for best costumes, so dress up. <laughs> and prizes for each age group. Um, <clears throat> the races will start at 10 o'clock, and the finish line will be at the Maritime Museum. And then two hours later, 12 o'clock, the 7th Annual Bike Parade. That will start at the bridge uh, that crosses Morro Creek. The bike pedestrian bridge starts at the north end. Decorate your bikes. Decorate yourselves. Uh, we will ride from the bridge down to the Embarcadero and all the way down to Tidelands Park. And when you get to Tidelands Park, Bike Valet will take charge of your bike for you. You just turn it over to them for, uh, for safety and you can spend the rest of the afternoon at the park. Um, it's going to be a full afternoon of activities at the park with ceremonies starting at 12.30. Coast Guard will present the colors. We'll have uh, singing of the national anthem, a few words from Thomas Jefferson, and then we'll have uh, food, fun, games, music, two live groups, Back Bay Betty, Ricky Montijo, and the Mojitos. And don't let me forget, two o'clock, another parade, the first annual paddle parade, stand up paddle, starting from Coleman Park down to Tidelands. Meet at 1.30 at Coleman Park and I guess wear decorated wetsuits and then paddle down to Tidelands and join the, the uh, festivities. Um, and special thanks to the San Luis Obispo Bike Club for donating $500 to pay for bike valet. The, uh, this is the seventh year that they've done that and we appreciate that very much. Um, <clears throat> This Saturday, July 1st, I'm going to do office hours again at Sun and Buns from 9 o'clock until 10 o'clock, and I'll follow that up with a business walk. And last month during office hours, I heard some very complimentary comments about the good job that Craig has done as our acting city manager, and I want to echo that and echo the mayor. Uh, great job. Thank you, Craig. And this is just to let you know that people in Morro Bay have noticed that as well. Um, 
Also during my business walk, I heard that the summer rush has begun. There are lots of tourists have been checking out the uh, shirt shop, looking for fun shirts to wear, Buttercup Bakery, a uh, new bakery in town, and they are doing a great business with pastries and coffee. Uh, Rio Salon is working on, maybe that's the wrong phrase, Rio Salon is working with brides who get married here in Morro Bay during the summer. Um, and lastly, I want to give a shout out to Morro Bay firefighters who are helping my friend Joan. Um, I want our crews to know that a lot of people appreciate what the firefighters are doing. We have great people in our department. So, that's hey, all. Thanks, Red. John? Thank you and good evening. A couple of announcements. Um, I wanted to announce that I'll be having a town hall meeting on July 17th, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., uh, hopefully at the community center. I haven't got that confirmed as to place yet, but that will be open to anybody from the public. General information, just myself, uh, my interaction with you, um, any questions um, that you may have, um, uh, that's what I'd like to deal with. I will have a couple of opening statements, but the last one seemed to work well, and um, I'd like to continue that so July 17th 630 6 to 730 um, hopefully at the uh, community center more to come on that exact location number two um, the air uh, pollution control board met last week and I'm the representative for the county air pollution control board um, for our community the issue on the Napomo Basin continues to be severe and significant I know for those of us here we enjoy um, one Wonderful, uh, wonderful air quality, but sometimes um, we do get down south to the Mesa, and it is um, literally um, a nightmare down there. The levels have been so high recently that on a number of occasions, on several days actually, we had the worst air quality in the nation the United States in our county as a result of the Napomo uh, Mesa. And so there is a discussion, ongoing discussion, it's been going on for 10 years, um, and I'm new to this committee. Um, however, um, I believe it's coming to a head. Um, if you're interested in getting alerts about the Mesa, um, go to the Air Quality Board um, um, site, and if you just Google uh, uh, San Luis Abyssal County Air Quality Board. Um, you'll find that you can sign up, uh, sign up for something called Notify Me About Air Quality, and you'll get those reports daily like I do. But something to pay attention to if you have any respiratory disease and head south for any amount of time. Uh, the third thing is um, um, a note that um, the mayor and I um, are also a subcommittee that is dealing with um, the repurposing of the um, uh, the plant that has closed a number of years ago, the power plant. Uh, we were invited to a meeting about two weeks ago, I believe it was, a uh, very uh, abrupt, short notice from um, a group that has been working with Dynagy to try to buy all three properties that Dynagy has in California. Uh, the group's name is IEP, and they are an energy company that um, is very interested not only in Morro Bay, but the other two sites as well. It's a three-site package. Um, we were notified that they may be uh, literally within uh, 60 to uh, 75 days of completing a purchase agreement. Um, and so representatives from Dynagy were at the table, um, the mayor and I, as well as Craig were at the table, and um, we had representatives from the investment bank group that would be backing um, the IE EP uh, energy company as well. Um, we don't have specifics as of yet with regard to their plans, but there will be more to follow. So you may be hear, hearing information about that. We're trying to get as much information as we can quickly to be involved with understanding how that might impact uh, the council and the community. Um, the third thing I wanted to mention, or fourth maybe, would be I think one of the most important things I have tonight, and, and that's a letter from young people. Don't you love it when young people get engaged in the community and engaged in government? 
Uh, I want to just take a minute to read a letter from Del Mar Elementary School. I happened to be there at one of their programs recently. And um, uh, Ms. Uh, Marianne Britton, who's an elementary uh, teacher uh, and environmental steward, um, was there and handed me an envelope that she asked me to share with the city council um, and the community. And um, in reading through this, um, I, I wanted to share that tonight with the council, but also with the community as well. Her letter says this, Dear Merrill Bay City Council, I have some very powerful letters stating the opinions of seven and eight-year-old scholars. I love that. Um, even though they're only about three feet, eight inches tall, they have some very persuasive words and feelings about how our current California recycling laws um, are problematic. We are sharing our letters with different branches of our government, but we would love to hear back from you. Students used to be able to walk a few blocks from school to sort and recycle the plastic bottles and cans from school and the community. However, now with the closures of so many recycling centers, we and other people have to drive many miles just to get the cash redemption value uh, returned to us and them. I do hope you will have the time to read these letters and share them with your colleagues. These scholars' bodies might be little, but their voices are very strong and we should be heard. Thank you for your time and consideration. We'd love to hear back from you. Sincerely, Marianne Britton. And I, I have about 30 letters. I'm not going to read 30. I want to read one. Um, this is from um, one student that I thought was particularly representative of, let's see, um, seven and eight-year-olds that appear to be 20 or 30 to me. I don't know. These kids get so smart so, so quickly. But it says this. Dear Morro Bay City Council, hey... Pay good attention, people. We need to have a talk about recycling. This student's words, I love it. Morro Bay, California needs to have a recycling center. We're tired of going all the way to San Luis Obispo or Cambria just to drop off recycling. That's why I, Samantha W., eight years old, is going to write a five-paragraph essay. That's right, five paragraphs. I will try my best to convince and persuade, I didn't know that word in when I was seven, persuade and convince you to make tons of recycling centers in California. My first reason is this, um, one, wasting resources, then also rights. Lastly, laws. Look down for my first reason. My first reason is Morro Bay needs a recycling center. I know it will cost money, but it's not fair. You know how tired you get from driving to meeting and stuff? Yes, I do. <laughs> right. Well, that's how we feel when we're having to drive to other cities to recycle. I have a loud voice, and I will show it. <laughs> We need to have a recycling center. I will convince you, and you will know how kids listen to adults and have to listen to and adults have to listen to kids. By adults, I mean you, government. Oh, that's great. Uh, my second reason is this: we need to have a recycling rights. We need to get our CRV money back. For instance, when a bottle of Sprite is sixty-nine cents and we pay the machine a dollar, we want our thirty-nine cents back. It's a new math. Cal uh, California has grocery stores, and I mean lots of them. And when we go there, we get our money back. Who thought of uh, not giving our money back to us? Hmm. Well, anyways, that's not fair. Money's valuable. And I, have I persuaded you yet? I love it. <laughs> My third reason is animals are going to be endangered. Don't. It says, you don't want um, that on your conscience, do you? These animals of Mother Earth are going to be harmed, and it's going to be goodbye for them. Have I convinced you yet? Uh, just reaffirming. Ergo, ergo, <laughs> I would like it, and I mean really like it, if you would make more recycling centers in California. Also, if you would please give us our money from the CRV, I hope my three reasons have persuaded you. One, wasting um, resources plus right and last money, or excuse me, animals. Even though I'm eight, I hope you listen to me. Sincerely, Samantha W. I got to tell you, that's a wonderful letter. I'm so happy that kids are involved in government and council. Um, hopefully, we'll have an opportunity to get this on the agenda and respond to these great young people in this, this class. Thank you. Right on, John. Yeah. 
Well, I can't top that. That was great um, and inspiring, I have to say. Um, actually, Red took my thunder on the 4th of July event at uh, Tidelands Park, but he forgot to mention one thing about it. It's free. No cost. It's all free. Um, and then also another free thing that's happening this summer is there's uh, emeritus classes that are being sponsored by Cuesta College. And they're held at the Morrow Bay Senior Center. And the classes include watercolor, painting, art history, creative cooking, and a senior seminar that includes topics of interest to those of us who are older. So for more information, contact Jessica at 805-591-6212. Uh, and those are free, too. Thank you. Thanks, Marlis. Uh, great announcements tonight. Um, any updates from uh, Craig on, on anything we need to look at? None? Okay, good. Um, with that, so we move on to um, public comment period. So we have speaker slips in the back. I've received some speaker slips for public comment for, all, for items that are not on the agenda. I've received one speaker slip for the water reclamation uh, agenda item at the end of the um, uh, or um, later on in the agenda. So I'll start off with uh, public comment for items not on public, uh, for not on the, uh, um, items not on the agenda, and then we'll have public comment for consent. I don't have any speaker slips for any items on consent, and we do? Okay. Um, good, okay, good, thanks. So we have some for consent, I won't forget that. So we'll start off with uh, public comment, and uh, Meredith Bates, if you'll start us off, please followed by Bob Keller. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Meredith Bates. I'm a Morro Bay resident. Um, I'm really glad to be here tonight. I'm so grateful for you for all the wonderful things that you do for our city. I wanted to uh, especially thank Jamie for supporting, I think I got it wrong, the Paris Accord um, and making the yeah. corrections. There's like 305 mayors who are in support of the Paris Accord. Mm -hmm. And I saw your name on there when I clicked through, so I was very proud of you, Jamie. Thank you. Also, another uh, thing that I was very pleased about is there was an NAACP meeting held here in Morro Bay, a mixer. And again, I saw our mayor attending really speaks to me of trying to bring diversity to our community, listen to people that we don't have too many of in our community, but just be aware of social justice. So thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the forums that are were postponed about uh, the public forums to understand more about the sewer plant. Um, I'm concerned that uh, how they might come about. And the reason I'm concerned is when the, uh, the peer review panel was formed, uh, the secret peer review panel, no residents were put on that panel. And I'm not sure if it was because the council didn't give direction of what staff needed to do to make those, that panel the way that it needed to be. I don't know what happened, but I am asking for the forums that staff listen to council, the council give direction to those forums so we're sure that the people can hear what they need to hear and ask the questions they need to ask. I would hate to have people up on a dais like you and the citizens down here with three minutes. I don't think that would work. So I'm looking for a, a Q&A process. Um, also, I wanted to let you know, if you don't already, that we're very fortunate to have Salute Carbajal coming here for a town hall meeting on August 23rd. He will be at St. Timothy's Hall uh, at 5.30 p.m. And I'm really hoping that uh, you all from the city can attend. I think we need to give him a big welcome. We're really fortunate to have him here to uh, talk about whatever we need him to talk about and be available for his constituents. Thank Can you, you say the date and time again for salutes? August please? 23rd, 5.30 p.m. at St. Timothy's Hall. Thanks, Meredith. Next, Bob uh, Keller, followed by Erica Crawford. 
Andrew Jones. Uh, my name is Bob, Bob Keller, resident of Morro Bay. And I'm here uh, representing Surf Project Surf Camp. I'm a volunteer, been a volunteer for a while, and I really enjoy it. Anyway, we have a flyer up here that's showing. We're having a barbecue June the 30th at the San Luis Sports Therapy. And we're going to have lots of food, fried tip barbecue, and there's also a blood drive. He wants to donate blood. And anyway, it's a fundraiser for our Project Surf Camp. It's our, one of our biggest fundraisers locally. And anyway, I just want to say that even the chief has volunteered to get into a wetsuit to help us with our program. And uh, I'm going I'm to tell John, anyway, I just say that I enjoy this. It makes my day, and it makes me a, a proud citizen of Moore Bay to be involved in this. I'm going to turn over to John Taylor, Project Surf Camp Director. Just want to add that uh, about a third of our operational budget uh, comes from camper registration fee, and as a nonprofit, the rest of that, uh, rest of our operational budget is derived from fundraisers, private donations, grants. So please come out and support uh, Project Surf Camp. We'd love to see y'all. Have a tri tip sandwich. There's a raffle, uh, lots of prizes. Thanks. Yeah, since I got time left, a minute. <laughs> Anyway, I just want everybody to show up all more Bay. It's right across from City Hall Library, and we have a great time. So and if the weather's great, we'll really have a great time. Thank you. Great, guys. Thank you. Erica Crawford, and then Susan Stewart. 12. 12. Okay. All right. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. Um, just a few short announcements, Erica Crawford from the Morbid Chamber of Commerce. First is that we are going to debut a pilot program at our Main Street Market. We went uh, through a rebranding effort over the last six or nine months, and we've come up with this look and feel for the Main Street Market. And this Saturday, we're going to have these little tote bags. Tote bags. So you can use them for groceries, and we'll, for every purchase, these cost $5, you'll get equal value back in market bucks. So you can use these little market bucks at our vendors, their dollars. Um, so if you were eyeing up a pair of earrings, but you thought they were out of your reach, you'll now get a free bag when you buy them, which is kind of cool. Uh, so we're also doing a ribbon cutting ceremony. So part of the Project Surf Camp, they've been great supporters of the chamber. Um, for years, and so we are going to do a ribbon cutting ceremony at San Luis Obispo Sports Therapy on Friday at 1230. Um, we are also planning, we're kind of venturing as a chamber into workforce development in a real way. Uh, so we've been having some good conversations with Cuesta College, uh, workforce development, economic development department. We are planning a meeting for July the 12th to discuss their hospitality training programs. So I am looking for, um, the chamber is looking for participation from our hospitality employers. Uh, anybody who's interested and has that date available, July the 12th, time and place TBD, um, is encouraged to contact us at the chamber, 805-772-4467, or they can email me directly, erica with a C, at morrowchamber.org. Um, and finally, we are doing our SCORE workshop, three-part series. Um, E-commerce is, you know, with the announcement of Amazon buying Whole Foods, we're paying attention. You know, we've got to talk about e-commerce. Um, and a good start is to get into using bulk mail email programs. Uh, so SCORE is going to do a three-part series. The first is this Thursday, June 29th from 5 to 7 p.m., and that is at the Community Center. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. Susan Stewart and then Paula Radke. Good evening, Mayor and staff. Susan Stewart, um, about a 30-year resident of Morro Bay, about 11 years as a business owner, been on lots of committees. I'm still on committees, including uh, promotions, uh, been with the Chamber Merchants Association, lots of different economic development committees, and so on. So a couple quick things. I noticed... Um, and, and this is kind of addressed to staff somewhat, since you're all here in one place, so I don't have to go to a bunch of different meetings. Uh, TBIT is looking at another new logo development. Um, every time we get a change of leadership at any level or change of marketers, we get a new logo development. TBIT's own expert that they had come in and do a wonderful seminar for us said, logos are the last thing you do. You got a lot of other important things to do. So, you know... It's sort of like a dog marking its territory. we got to do a new logo. I don't know. To me, that's kind of not relevant. Um, however, one thing that I would like to see, and we've talked about a lot in all of our economic development programs and our downtown enhancement and our Connect the Embarcadero, 
signage. I would love to see the city just get a big vinyl banner, put it at the bottom of the stairs, this way to downtown, until we get some great development happening there and we get all of our new whatever we're doing with the Distazio's property done, let's put a banner that directs our visitors to go up to the downtown, old town, whatever you call it, temporary. We have our planning director here who can sign off on that as a sign guy, right? Okay. So would love to see that happen. And, and one last little quickie. Um, I was not here for, I was out of town for all of the marijuana discussions that were going on. Um, but I did have a gal in from Colorado in the store the other day. And she did say that they're seeing a lot of economic benefits, that taxation of that is really important. One thing she said was they did see some challenges with property values because you had a lot of people coming in with cash who were able to and really only had the option to put their cash into real estate. So that kind of raised property values might be something to consider and especially to watch in commercial districts. So limiting the numbers of venues would make sense to me, but also locations and then looking at, um, you know, if you limit the numbers, that kind of limits how many landlords can get in on the cash cow that would be a dispensary. Um, and then you have my other comments because I wrote y'all a nice letter about it. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Paula Radke. That's my last speaker slip for public comment. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for giving me a few minutes. Um, I was reading the uh, budget review, I think, and noticed you're considering a roundabout on 41. I know you've got some grant money and it's hard not to spend grant money, but I'm very concerned about the amount of pedestrian traffic on, in that intersection. I'd like to know how you're going to address that if a roundabout goes in that area. I'm also concerned about the panel of peers that reviewed our wastewater facility. We haven't been told who was on that panel. And I believe there was supposed to be some citizen input on that, and I'm, you know, we just don't know. Nothing has been revealed at this point. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. And Marie, you wanted to speak to the water reclamation now because you can't stay for the item. Uh, so, public comment for um, Anne Marie, please. Yes, thank you. And that concludes the speaker slips for public comment. It's going to be a very short comment. I want to thank, thank you. the opportunity of speaking to the council. And um, it's just about a general uh, remark and a suggestion on my part, not at all a critique. I know this because I've been coming here to the meetings um, regularly for several months. Then one of the items that is really the most um, interesting for a lot of people who live in Moore Bay and come here is the water reclamation thing. And I'm not going to talk about that, but only the order in which you put the agenda. I noticed over a period of time that this item, which creates a lot of interest in town and for which you have a lot of people coming and, and wanting to know what's happening, is oftentimes at the end of the agenda. Those meetings are very long. I'm just suggesting, is there a possibility that this agenda be reviewed sooner in the order in which you present uh, the various um, subjects that are going to be discussed? Uh, some of us, as it was noted at a previous meeting, are older citizens, and so we are not going to attend until 11 a.m. And even though there have been a remark a while back that being old, maybe we are not interested in what's happening tomorrow. I'm interested in what's happening today and tomorrow just as well. But I have trouble staying up until 11 p.m. here. That's all. I thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you Anne Marie. Name. Her name? Uh, Anne, Anne Marie. Um, uh, it's just your name for, for the record. For the, for the, your name for the record, if you could. Oh, it is here. Okay, good. They got it. Thank you. Thanks, Marlis. So that concludes all the speaker slips that I have for public comment. With that, I'll close public comment and bring it back to council. Um, just some items. 
I'm going to start with um, Anne Marie on the agenda order. So um, our policies and procedures have uh, the agenda order, and actually. Um, we have agendized our reviewing our policies and procedures to address just your concern. Specifically, in our policies and procedures, it um, requires that we start public hearings at 7 o'clock, or not before. So we're going to review those policies and procedures so we can have a little bit more flexibility with that. Um, the order's been that way um, from, from several years. I know we've gone through that before, but the, the public hearing one some, sometimes kind of um, gets in the way of how we make the order, but we'll be able to address that, and so we'll, we'll be bringing that back. Um, and then um, the other one I just responded to, the, the peer review panel. Um, a couple comments on how that came about, and I'll look for Rob. Maybe you can comment as well. Um, when we went for the peer review panel, um, uh, Rob gave gave us some comments and input on what a peer review panel might look like. Um, there were from the council direction. There was no direction from council to have citizens as part of that. Um, it's not a secret peer review panel. They're going through that. It's very public because we know it's going through that, and the report will come back into our council meeting. We'll have that discussion, and maybe you can respond a little bit more detailed on that. So the um, the results, the peer review took place on um, uh, June seventh, and the. Peers aren't secret people. We're not hiding them. Uh, uh, Matt Thompson from the city of Paso Robles, um, David Hicks um, from city of San Luis Obispo, John Waddell from the county, um, Russ Fleming from the city of Pismo Beach were um, staff members from those cities that have recent experience with large wastewater treatment plant projects. Um, they reviewed the project, gave us a lot of insight on um, our situation, had some good recommendations. We're finalizing that report, which will go to WERFCAC on the 5th of July. Um, that report will be out uh, this Thursday, so it will be a, a public document at that time. Um, and then uh, following that, based on what council does on a later item uh, will depend on where it goes to next. So um, um, that's where we stand on the peer review process okay. right now. All right. Any other comments from council to my left, to my right? Seeing none, we'll close, uh, move on from uh, public comment. We'll go on to consent. And we have two speaker slips for consent, uh, starting with uh, Susan Stewart and then Betty Winholtz. <coughs> Susan Stewart again. Uh, just two quickies. I wanted to offer my support for items A7 and A10. Um, A7 is the Visitor Center contract uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. I think they're doing a great job, and I think the city's getting a pretty darn good deal um, for the money. Um, it's great to have them there and answering questions and open seven days a week. And then um, certainly as a, a downtown merchant, I am really really pleased to have a toilet you know in the downtown for visitors a place to direct them um, I've heard from everybody that it's the cleanest nicest one probably better than their own <laughs> restrooms at home um, so you know all in support of that continuing if we can ever find the money to make an actual proper bigger restroom that would be great but in the interim um, I, th I think Beverly and Lenny are doing a, an excellent job of keeping that open, keeping it clean, keeping it friendly. Um, not only visitors, but certainly a lot of local people use it, and, and some of our less sheltered population take advantage of it as well. So I hope to see that relationship continue and, and to realize that, that basically, you know, if it's it continues with that $600 or so reduction in what's a pretty high rent for that <coughs> building, that's $20 a day. So you couldn't pay a city staff person $20 a day to keep it that clean and that good shape. So anyhow, very much in support of those two items. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Betty Winholtz. Good evening. I want to address um, two different items on the consent agenda. The first one is A8, which has to do with adopt a trees, adopt a bench, adopt whatever. Uh, people want to donate in memorial for other people. Um, 
in their special way. Um, when the library was re-landscaped by the city, they took out a memorial tree and a memorial bench. And both those items and their plaques disappeared. And they were dedicated to people who had been uh, integral in getting that library built. And so that was real sad for us who saw that happen. And um, it was done with the library not knowing it, so they couldn't go out and like save the plaques. So there's nowhere in your document where you talk about the city. Um, you certainly talk about others, you know, that might be hurting or <coughs> taking care of. But how do we know that this won't happen again? That the city's not going to pay attention and um, something's going to get lost because um, we don't want to lose those memories. Um, the second one is kind of a general statement about a number of your consent items, which all have to do with your 2% um, increase uh, for your staff, uh, for our staff. And um, believe me, I have no problem with giving increases to people, uh, particularly when um, everybody else is getting increases. Um, my concern is, and you have talked about this, that we're going to be having a CalPERS issue in a couple of years. And by elevating people to higher levels of grade and then bringing people underneath them up and then increasing salaries by 2%, I feel like you're adding to the storm. So I'd like to know how you're going to deal with that. And maybe you're putting that off until next year's budget. But I, I see a storm coming with all that at once. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. That concludes the speaker slips for consent. And I'll close public comment for consent and bring it back to council. And um, I'd like to pull um, items A5, A8, A9, and A10. A5, A8, A9, and A10. Um, any other items from council? Just me? Okay. Well, no, I had, I had the same. Yeah. So, so you had the same? Okay. All right, good. Um, then I'll take a motion to approve um, all items on consent with the exception of items A5, A8, A9, and A10. So moved. I second. We have a motion by Mr. Heading, a second by Ms. McPherson. Any discussion? None? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. Item A5. Um, I just want to make a, a little addition on the work plans. Page 27 of 178 for Rec and Park. Um, I, it, this was a little oversight, but it has to do with um, facilities and just the addition. We're in, in that particular page. Let me just get to it as well. Page 27 of 178. I was reminded about this um, recently, and it's under recreational court space, and it has um, research and present to council opportunities for additional future recreational space, bocce ball courts, skate, skate park, um, additional pickleball courts. Um, we did have one of the discussions um, uh, previously with um, uh, Frisbee golf, so as far as f um, additional spaces that was brought to our attention, I just want to make sure that's added in there for, into the scope of uh, topic for um, the, our advisory board. Certainly we can add that and as included in the parentheses that wasn't intended to be an exhaustive list, but certainly sure. we can yeah. memorialize it. In yeah, there. thanks. Um, I, I'd like to make a comment also on this item, uh, specifically um, page 15 of 178. And this is for a, uh, kind of a shout out to the general public in terms of understanding the, the um, schedule and the scope throughout a year, throughout the year, not only just of council and staff, but of the various advisory boards. There's a wonderful, the, this meeting calendar. And when we talk about the goals and procedures of how policy is made driving what we do on the council throughout the year, this calendar of events really kind of gives a good grounding to what's going on. And so I'd like to put a um, shout out to staff for putting it together that it's very um, comprehensive and it really gives a, a good idea of what's going to be happening. Okay, great. So, Thanks, Matt. Red? Yes, I have a concern about the TBID work plan which is page 26 of 178. Um, the item that says include VR, RV into the bid um, also adds a new item which 
uh, I don't think has come before council before proposing a pursuit of changing our bid law from the 1989 law to the 1994 law. Um, I see those as two separate efforts and I think the work plan needs to be divided um, and particularly because changing the law from 1989 to 1994 will have some impact on our hoteliers and uh, I want to end on the city and I want to be sure that that is broken out and daylighted and everybody is aware that there is an effort being made there. So, um, so can I have confirmation that we'll do that? Okay, thanks. So um, I guess we need to get concurrence on those comments with with council on that as well. And I, I just no, I am so I I, I just want to re reiterate because as I appreciate the the comments on that, and I had to uh, re revisit your comments as well. So. Um, that process for the 1989 80, um, excuse me, 89 law versus the 1994 law, that's just a start of the conversation to evaluate that. I, I need to hear from Ikani on that. I think that's the case. But, yeah, but, it, it's uh, not implementing that, but it's having that first conversation. You're, you're right, Mayor. It was only consideration that the TBID brought forward to uh, consider only. Right. Um, and to bring forward to council, council, um, they may not even bring it forward, but okay. they did mention it, so I had to put it down. Okay, um, but you're correct. Yeah. Okay. Is that a good? Okay. We're all we're all uh, in concurrence on yeah, that. Yeah. Well, I just in the com the comments that um, I had the same concerns that you raised, uh, Mr. Davis, but also um, just just the way it reads, if it could be stated just a little more succinctly. Um, as to um, specifically what the outcome pieces are expected to be and what will be coming. That, that was the comment that I had written down. So that would just be helpful to me. So we're... John, can you clarify on that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of didactic material in here, and I just think it's um, voluminous. And so maybe you could just put down the action item, the individual responsible, the expected outcome, and the date. Um, bid to pursue um, which is or the, review it, okay. l law um, date, you know, who's doing it and what the outcome is. And so, I just, yeah, just to keep it simpler. We can certainly condense that down into the, uh, the subsections that you just mentioned, Council Member Heading. Yeah. Thanks. Would we need to bring this item back then? Uh, that's a good question. And I was, I was just, I, you know, since it's on consent, we've had um, the conversations on this. So it was, I guess the expectation was we'd, we'd be um, approving on uh, approving this. And those languages and, and, uh, and things were worked out at our last council meeting. So, um, you know, moving forward, we're going to either continue this or we can work out those details. From, from a legal perspective, you have the ability to, to make modifications tonight, yeah. as long as they're clear so the staff can understand them and pass it with those modifications, or you certainly have the ability to continue this till another yeah. meeting. So, uh, Red? I would like to see this particular item come back. Okay, any other comments? I think would be helpful for us as we go through this is, um, you know, and I know um, we're, we all try to do that, that we, um, as the, these come out, that we try to coordinate these comments um, so they can be articulated and perhaps worked out um, ahead of our council meeting so we can get these things approved. Um, I, you know, I know we all do that, but um, as a, just as a, as a state of comment. Um, so, Marlis, you were nodding your head. You had some comments. Uh, uh, no, I didn't. I did not have any more comments. Um, I, I think um, that my preference would be to be more specific about what we're expecting, and hopefully we don't need to bring it back. I mean, it would be good to approve it tonight. Could, yeah. could, could I suggest language that might? Sure. Could we do yeah. that now or yeah. not? Simplify it? 
yes, you and can, so yeah. won't have to come so back. So we could we can suggest some language and then maybe go on to the next item and then while that's being worked, maybe that can be worked out and then we can revisit the the exact language as we you know continue through this okay. instead of working through that. You, you want to make your comments, John? Um, I, I would just use the first sentence uh, as your uh, goal statement. The rest of it is explanatory stuff of process. And uh, then, so that is with the VR, RV subcommittee meet and layout plan for proper business outreach to all affected lodging industries, period. And, and the rest of it is really just um, kind of the process of how you're going to do that, and, and I don't think it's necessary. Um, uh, and then the last thing that I would put is the council process, resolution of intention, public hearing process, noticing and publication um, would be brought back to council. Um, in approximately February. Is that what? Yes. Um, my concern, John, is that the second sentence is an entirely different subject and it's a new subject. It was not addressed in any previous draft work plan that was brought to council. It suddenly appeared here tonight. I brought it to uh, Econi's attention on Thursday, and Thanks, I man. had hoped that there would be a change to this page brought to us tonight with new language, and that didn't happen. So I am, I want to see the final language before I want to approve this uh, work plan. I'll support that. That's fine. Fair, fair enough, Red. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, with the sake of, go ahead, Greg. So, <clears throat> I believe I heard the council come to at least a, a couple members that they'd, they'd like to actually see the language prior to approving that. Um, it, it would be helpful to staff if we had a little more clarity on what you would like us to bring back exactly so we don't okay. go through this process again. Yep, I, I so we just totally brought this agree. forward on the 13th, so I want to yep. make sure we can get that approved yeah. next time we bring it forward. Okay. So um, I, my, my suggestion would be to um, move on to the next items, keep A5 open. Um, maybe we can, um, as we take a short recess, we can work out language and bring back item A5. I'm looking for some confirmation process-wise, um, Joe, as far as being able to do that. Two of you could come here and try to work out language, but more than two of you could. I, I, I understand. So I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we can we can see if we can... the. People that are most concerned with the exact language can work those out, and then okay. we can bring that back. Yes. Okay. So um, we'll move on, and we'll see if we can do that, and then we'll have that discussion um, and, and get through it. Would that? Do you think we'd be able to craft that out? I'm looking to my right, John, and and Red. Do you, do you think we'd be able to do that, or do you do you not feel as though we'd be able to get there, and just want to have that come back? I'm willing to have a discussion during break. Okay. All right. Thanks. John, you're Yeah, okay? that's fine. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Um, we'll move on to, to the next one, item A8. I'm um, going to go to item A8. Item A8, um, appreciated comments from Ms. Winholtz. And actually, I had some similar uh, concerns for this as well. Um, I'd like to actually continue this item and, and had some discussions with staff on this, and thanks, um, Rob, for this. My proposal would be to continue the item and bring it back to council with standalone policy programs um, that we can implement that would be specific to adopt a park, street, whatever that thing is, planters, memorial bench, bike racks, and we'd have a resolution for those said programs. We'd, be, we'd work with our volunteer groups. Um, we'd have the expecta expectation language in there um, for what the expectation is from the city. Um, it could very well um, have some uh, language in there in the policy that would uh, be able to memorialize where these benches are and plaques so we can have uh, we can retain that history and, and, uh, and that. So my uh, recommendation is we continue this item and bring it back to council for standalone po policy programs. Um, specifically to adopt a, and I'm just going to say thing, it could be a park, it could be the street. I think we could work that out with our um, Public Works Advisory Board, perhaps Rec and Park, I'm not sure, but I'd uh, um, leave that open. I think it would probably do that. And then um, 
um, contact and, uh, and reach out to our volunteer groups that are part, already part of those programs, and we can dial in a, a specific program. Because right now, um, my understanding is we have very loose agreements that um, is not helping us. So I'd, instead of approving what we have tonight, I'd like to see us refine that. And, and those are my comments, and I'm looking for some support from the rest of council. Yeah, I, I, had, I was going to pull this item also. I had a number of questions about it, and it sounds like we are going to have to change the res, a resolution, a previous re resolution. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems appropriate to pull it and bring it back. Okay. Any other comments for this item? None? Okay. Rob, any feedback on that? Do you Just... Um, Indication, the report um, discusses a lot of things with the Adopt-a-Park, Adopt-a-Thing program. Generally, are we on the right track with the, with the, the pol if we combine all this stuff into a policy, is there anything that, you, that we've discussed in here that you would like to see change um, in the policy or... Um, um, that we've gotten wrong with our discussions with our Public Works Advisory Board? I, I, truthfully, I don't. I, I have a hard time just seeing the content of the policy it, with particulars. I know it, it's just kind of general in the staff report. So for me, I was looking for um, much more specifics. Sure. Um, yeah, and, and I... Yeah, I, I think, and I, and I know, I, I imagine as we, I guess the expect you're you're looking for some more specifics, and so am I. In this, it's these are very general. I, I'd like to reflect some other, some um, some other policies out there that we have that that identify um, the expectations of the volunteer, the expectations of the city, um, and and that I'm, I expect and and. Uh, some conversations I've had with some of the volunteer groups, it would they would definitely be able to um, uh, in, help us craft the language and yes. the concerns. Yes. For example, I don't think we have anything about a feedback loop in there at all, where we would meet with the volunteer groups on a um, and I think those things, monthly, weekly, quarterly, yeah. annual basis. And I think it depends on what's being adopted, what that meeting um, time frame would be. Yeah. I think those are the types of things that we would be looking to put into the policy document. And that would be great. And I, I think after we see some more, have that type of input and those types of discussions, we can get more into that detail. I didn't wasn't going to get into that kind of okay. detail for the consent item, but just wanted to move it forward into a continued state so we can have those discussions. Uh, Matt, yeah. yeah. Um, I also did want to pull this item. Um, in terms of the conversation, what you're saying, one suggestion from my point of view, Rob, reading through the report, is <clears throat> having a clear and precise procedure for each section, how the adopted parks come to be, who can, who is going to be maintaining it, um, the time as it was suggested earlier, then those clear procedures and kind of a cutting down so uh, of the verbiage so it's very simplistic to see. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just have a comment. Um, I had asked a series of questions about this item, and one of them had to do with who had to register for this program. And the answer that came back was that it isn't just the organization, it's actually all of the individuals. And that is the sort of thing that I think would need to be discussed with some of these groups, because I know that something like Moore Bay and Bloom, the volunteers vary every every week and I don't know that and it's totally volunteer people just show up and I don't know if they ha all have to register which is what this policy suggests if that's workable for them so I do think we would need to consult with some of the groups uh, about that issue in particular and that comes from a broader city volunteer policy regarding liability coverage so we may need to look at that also Okay. Is that enough then for, for Yes, us? it is. Okay. Thank you. Great. Anything, Craig? Yeah. No, I think we're pretty clear. Okay. Uh, All right. Go back, do some vetting, bring back some options and recommendations forward based on that vetting, and have a more comprehensive discussion about each of the discrete potential adopt a thing, for lack yeah. of a better term. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, policies. Thanks. Thanks, Craig. Um, so A9, based on that, um, just take a... a 
just for procedurally, um, I'll take a motion to continue item A8 as recommended. So moved. We have a motion by Marlos. Need a second. A second by Mr. Heading. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. And then item A9. Um, I just, I, I pulled this. I know, um, uh, just wanted to clarify uh, on the description it says um, police support services manager. And I know in the, in the sheet itself it says support services manager. Just wanted to clarify whether or not it needed to reflect that um, or if that was um, appropriately. Um, uh, consistent with both the description and the item that's in the, the worksheet. And we can provide that simple update, literally adding the word police okay. in front okay. of that to the actual description okay. on page 58. Okay. Sorry, the hole punch is in a horrible position to see the, yeah. the page number on that one. Okay. All right, any other? I th um, if you wanted to look at that, that's on page... It's the sheet, calls it out on page 58 of 178. Right. Support services manager instead of police support services manager. Just want to, yeah. Okay. So if there, unless there's any other discussions, seeing none, I'd make a motion to approve item A9 as amended. Second. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second and a second. Um, <laughs> um, uh, motion by Mayor Iron, second by Councilmember Heading. And um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. And then item A10. And item A10, I'm just going to look for Mr. Pannoni to give us a little update on that. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> you, you pulled this because I actually requested you to do that. Um, there's a technical thing that we have to take care of. So what I'm going to be suggesting is tonight you conditionally approve the agreement, uh, the extension of the uh, Grandma's frozen yogurt. The reason we need to make it conditional is a few weeks ago we found out that that corporation actually was suspended from operation in California because some paperwork didn't get filed and we thought it was going to get filed before tonight and three attempts were made to file it and it kept getting bounced back. Um, and so the um, uh, corporate owner is, again, had a conversation with an actual human being at the Secretary of State's office and think we have it all lined up and, and it's going to be filed. But because it's not filed tonight, I think you should make the approval conditional because we can't enter into an agreement with, an exist, with a non-existent corporation. Okay. Any comments or questions based on that? Not on that, but I pulled it for a different reason. Okay. Yeah, just, and I want to echo Susan's comments. I think it's great to have a restroom down there, very important. Um, I would just ask staff to look at signage and, and directional uh, improvements to that restroom. I know it's there because I go there a lot with my grandkids. Um, it's a great restroom, great place, but um, if you're not from here, it's probably tough to find. It is tough to find. So I don't know how we could improve signage. Um, I'd be happy to walk with somebody and show you what I'm talking about. But um, um, that would be a recommendation that I'd like to see in this as well. I have that same comment, and I think it was part of the requirement um, to have that signage. So, um, But I would echo that. that uh, there is some, yeah. but it's just not really clear. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'd feel comfortable uh, conditionally approving this, um, understanding that the, the way it was explained. Um, I understand that the corporation, that's something you file the paperwork annually, and I think it's kind of easy to overlook that and getting it done in a timely manner. Um, I know one of those are sitting on my desk as well, so you, get, you have to get to, to that. So any other comments? None? Um, I take a, uh, I take a so motion. Just, just to be clear, sorry yes. if I can jump in. Um, on the signage mm -hmm. issue, just to make sure I heard that correctly, we're going to be looking at signage into the future, not incorporating it into this agreement or draft agreement that was already agreed upon by the other party. My, 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 my um, overall comment is um, to accept this as is, but to improve signage um, f to the restroom. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Location finding. Hey, Mr. Joe? Mayor, just, just for the record, um, the, when the motion is made, we just need to add the word conditional approval of the sublease. Okay. And before we do that, so there is um, part of the approval part, um, this contract is the signage is in there. I just don't think it's um, 
adequate. And so there is um, language in here that requires proper signage. So I think we just need to take a look at that. Okay. So um, based on um, city attorney's recommendation in the specific language that we conditionally approve um, and authorize extended extension for the lease agreement between the city and Scott Meisland for 307 Morbay Boulevard and approval of an amendment to the sublease agreement between the city and Gram Grandma's um, frozen yogurt and waffle shop. The sublease is, is conditionally approved. Only and the sub only the sublease, only the sublease is conditionally approved. And that's the motion. I second. And we have a motion and a second. So motion by Mayor Irons, second by Councilmember McPherson. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. And that concludes uh, consent. And we're we're not going to close consent. We're going to leave um, item A5 open. We'll be able to confer at a recess and then come back and have that discussion. So we'll leave consent um, open at this time. And um, just procedurally wise, I just want to check in with you, Mr. Pannoni. We're going we're to move on to our public hearings, and then we'll take that recess after the public hearings, and then we'll come back to item A to consent. Okay. All right, so with that, um, we'll move on to the next item of business. Um, item B1, adoption of resolution number 3117, directing the levy of annual assessment for the cloisters and landscaping lighting and maintenance district. And that would be Mr. Leivik. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're here for the third step in the process of levying the annual assessment for the Cloisters Landscape Lighting Maintenance Assessment District. Um, in summary, um, Council approved the formation of the owner requested um, maintenance assessment district in September of 1996. The Cloisters Special Assessment District was required as part of the approval of the development. Um, the assessment district um, improved include a public park, bicycle pathway, right-of-way landscaping, coastal access ways, um, ESH, environmentally sensitive habitat restoration areas, coastal view access ways, a scenic conservation easement, um, open space, um, and um, these open space are not to be developed with any structures. Um, Cloisters Assessment District is funded by the property owners paying a total of $148,944. On April 11th of this year, um, Council adopted Resolution 15-17, which ordered the preparation of the um, required engineer's annual levy report. And then on May 9th of this year, Council adopted Resolution 20-17, which approved that report and set the date uh, of this um, hearing. Okay. Oops. Skip ahead here. Uh, major expenditures of the um, projected in the engineer's report is um, staffing at $52,000, contract services at $43,000, and utilities at $23,000. The end of uh, 2016, there was a, a capital reserve of almost $69,000. Um, capital maintenance and major maintenance projects completed this year included uh, um, some major uh, reed trimming, uh, tree trimming around the pond area. Um, we expect that at the end of um, 
um, this year, 2017, typo there, um, uh, capital reserve of $88,000. Uh, future capital projects uh, may include uh, median overhaul at about $100,000, um, place structure replacement, um, turf replacement, and perhaps an adult fitness course around the, the lawn area. Um, neighborhood meetings, we held two this year, or held one this year actually. Um, we have one planned for this summer, the tour of the facilities for the local residents. Um, Staff's recommendation is to um, conduct the final public hearing and adopt resolution 31-17 approving the levy of the annual assessment for the Cloisters Landscape Lighting Maintenance Assessment District for the fiscal year 2017-2018. Um, that concludes my report and happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Rob. Um, any questions from council to my left? We have a public comment from Ms. Beatty. Um, do we need to wait until that's presented mm -hmm. before we can address it? Yeah, we can it? go through questions and then mm -hmm. once we're done with questions, my, we'll open it for public comment and then discussion. Okay. My question has to do with her public okay. comment. So, okay. Right. Okay, thanks. Matt, any questions? Um, Rob, in terms of um, this assessment, is the, um, the assessment value sufficient to upkeep um, the area? Um, currently it is. As you can see, we have a slight uh, reserve that we've been um, establishing for capital improvements. Uh, but ultimately, inflation will rear its ugly head. And um, since the um, assessment is a fixed price, um, at some point in time in the future, um, the assessment may not cover um, the maintenance costs. So either um, the level of maintenance will have to be lessened or... Um, I guess there's three options. The vote, the assessees could vote to increase their assessment, or the city could contribute general funds to the um, assessment district. Um, was it a mistake, Rob, um, not to put the um, a cola um, on the assessment um, amount? I don't know if it was conscious or an unconscious decision by the city. You no, know, I guess when I say that, not a mistake. Is it common to have such a uh, cola attached to it? The assessment districts that I've worked on in the past with other municipalities have a cost of living adjustment associated with them. And so for whatever reason, um, conscious or unconscious. Um, okay, that's all my questions right now. Thanks, Matt. Anybody to the right? John or Marlis? Any questions for staff? Uh, I asked my questions ahead of time, and they were answered in the presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one speaker slip over for public comment. Don Beatty. Come on up, Don. Greetings, Mr. Mayor, members of the City can Council. You, can we have Joe? Can you help her a little bit with that? Make sure. She, thank you. Is it just Thanks. Me? I need to talk closer. Okay, sorry. Hello, everybody. Me again. Whoops, me again. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. My name is Don Beatty, and I live in Moore Bay. I have met with most of you, City Council members, Mayor, um, and have come away wondering where many of you get the idea that close to the homeowners are solely responsible for the maintenance of the Cloisters Assessment District. Nowhere is it written that this is the case. I guess from the city's perspective, they would be nice, but it's a perception, I believe, that was started by Rob Schultz and is held as truth to this day. The lawsuit of 2003 related to the actual assessments and what special benefit was provided to the homeowners for these assessment dollars, but it did not state that we homeowners were responsible for the entire assessment amount. Certainly not in perpetuity. The assessment money was supposed to pay only for the special benefit conferred on us by the assessment district. For the past 20 years, the closest homeowners have kept their end of the original condition. 
this was in spite of the city's record of doing a terrible job on their end. As I've said before, the original assessment amount was established to protect the city financially from maintenance costs until homes are built, generating significantly higher property tax revenues. When funnels the city at whatever percentage that is, these revenues would be enough to contribute or even take over. It was never intended to exclusively pay to maintain these public amenities for the benefit of visitors, not just nearby property owners. Since no cost of living increase was established, that's your question, Matt, um, at the time this condition was agreed to, and staff has indicated that the original assessment amount may no longer be enough to cover the maintenance costs adequately. I'd like to propose that beginning with next year's budget, the city contribute <coughs> an annual 2% COLA, which is slightly less than $3,000, to the assessment district to help with maintenance of the city-owned and publicly accessible property. Thanks in advance for your consideration. Thanks, Don, and thanks for um, providing the written part of your statement as well for us. That's helpful. Thank you. I don't have any other speaker slips for this item. I'll close public comment and bring it back to council. And I'll look over to my right. Marlos, you want to start us off on any um, comments or discussions? Well, we have heard this um, item previously, mm -hmm. and um, we have seen the proposed three alternatives. And of course, it's we're talking about in the future, so we're not talking about this year's budget. And I do think we will need to address it in next year's budget. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but I think at this point, we simply want to continue the assessment mm -hmm. as we've talked about before and I think already voted so okay thank you thanks John yes, um, thank you I would agree with that and clarify me if I'm wrong um, Mr. Leivik that um, the special assessment um, as I note in your report um, is specifically due to various things that inured value to the property owners and were also designed to mitigate certain things uh, environmentally that um, we note in your report. Um, could you just briefly remind us how we determined to service other areas of the city in terms of maintenance of parks and, and streets, et cetera, and how the cloisters fits into that? Just, just for a matter of clarification, I think, for Mrs. Beattie. So the, with the exception of the Cloisters area and the North Point area, our two assessment districts, um, maintenance of city parks, open space facilities is paid for out of the general fund. Um, we establish a level of maintenance, we estimate a cost for that and we put it in the budget. Council approves it or sends it back, we work it over, and we have a final budget document. With the um, cloisters, um, historically we have a, uh, a fixed cost, and we work within that um, fixed cost to perform that maintenance. We've tried various um, um, ways of doing that. Um, in the early years, um, we probably, overstaffed the Cloisters uh, Maintenance District and um, provided a very high level of service from what I understand. I wasn't here during those years, but um, uh, had a couple of people assigned full time um, out there. We've done contract uh, maintenance, had a, um, went out to bid, had a, hired a landscape contractor to perform that maintenance. Um, with some success, some limited success, we've pulled that back and now are transitioning back to staff performing um, those maintenance activities. Um, the goal is to keep the level of maintenance at all our parks the same, so that Cloisters Park is no different than the maintenance at Del Mar Park. Um, that we don't have a, a lower end park um, um, at Cloisters. And right now we can, we can do that. We believe we can do that with staff supplementing with contract labor. 
Um, and that's really how we, we plan on maintaining cloisters. But like I said, sometime in the future, this item will have to be um, dealt with. Right now we have sufficient funds to maintain the park and open space areas um, and establish a small reserve. Um, we may not have that luxury as um, we all understand how inflation has worked over time. Good. Good. Thank you for that explanation. I think that helps. Again, uh, I, I do support the staff report and satisfied with the process so far and would support uh, staff recommendation. Thanks, John. Matt? Rob, um, in terms of assessment districts, we have the two right now current in the history of the town. Have we had any other um, assessment districts? districts? Um, Bayshore Bluffs. Mm -hmm. There was an assessment district there that was and um, it had some sort of um, uh, sundown. Um, um, now it was um, dissolved by council action. Okay. I don't know the history of uh, of why that happened. Um, um, okay. other than no, I just wanted to bring it up because Ms. Beatty, she brings up uh, this item perhaps because um, thinking about in terms of the history of the cloisters going back to it, um, I agree with kind of what um, you're pointing out, um, um, John and Marlis, in terms of the um, benefits um, given to the people who historically have bought these lots in the cloisters and the benefits they've gotten um, because when the cloisters came about, the there's a number of people in town that didn't necessarily want the cloisters. Um, and that's when we look at the, the history of this uh, assessment district and what it gives to the people who live there. And there are, and I totally agree with you, Don, um, there's definitely benefits from people coming in, not just people from Morrow Bay, um, but however, there's that historical precedent of this piece of property. And so I agree with the, um, the staff report right now, I'm moving ahead with it right now. But I also point out that in terms of the Bayshore, um, group in the in the back bay that was an assessment district at one time also so moving forward we could eventually or the council could uh, uh, decide to vote the cloisters out of being an uh, assessment district and go into the general fund to benefit the maintenance but right now um, also is it possible my next question I wanted to get the history because I think it's very important in this discussion um, not just for the last 10, 15 years, but for the last 30 years in terms of people in town with that assessment district. In terms of the maintenance schedule, um, we've had a lot of um, issues in the last number of years. It was so taken care of in the early 2000s, and now it's gotten off of that. So, Rob, in terms of is it possible to have a, a better maintenance schedule? Or how would you... Is there any way to improve that? Or are you satisfied with what we have? Um, I'm just thinking that's one of the contentions being brought forward. I'm like, well, we have an assessment district. Can we provide some sort of, um, you know, concrete way of saying this is what you're going to get for it? That's all. Red? I also support the, uh, the staff report tonight. Um, but I, I guess I have a question. Um, Ms. Beattie makes some assertions in her public comment about the intention of the assessment district. And I don't know what the language is, and I don't know what sort of legal review we've had of the agreement. Um, but I, I just wonder um, what exactly does the agreement say? And also, what does the lawsuit of... 2003. What was what was the outcome of that? The the issue and the outcome. I'll, I'll can I, can I make a brief comment on that? Sorry, Joe. I'm sorry to interject, but we did have an agenda item on this almost five years ago, and it discussed the the legal action and the court case. And so, this is this has come up again. Obviously, at new council, I was on the council when we had that discussion. We could probably revisit that same. Um, staff report at some point, but we have had that discussion, and uh, the legal analysis was provided. Maybe that's what Joe is going to speak to. I, I just, but I just want to at least uh, speak to the item that has come before council before. And um, so, anyway, I'll look to Craig and or Joe at the same time. Yep. So that kind of sparked a little memory um, in talking to Dana. There is there has been declared a future agenda item to look at exactly what we're talking about is working with the cloisters group, um, doing some outreach and bringing back to council next year some of these options going forward. Um, what we can certainly do is re-daylight that 
that staff report done five years ago to make sure that is kind of brought up to speed for some of us who haven't been here, new right. council members. So we'll certainly have that on our list of things to do. Okay, thanks. Joe? I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating only because I don't want to get into a back and forth with um, opinions as mm -hmm. to what I think the assessment is and what someone else may think the assessment is. But um, I just want to remind the council, when I first came here as city attorney, this was quite a flap. Sorry for using that word. This was quite a flap. And so I did a lot of reviewing of the documents then. And there's no question in my mind that this assessment district is for maintenance as well as original construction, but also for maintenance of that um, park. And the courts have made it clear that there's significant benefits to the surrounding property owners for that park, which is what is necessary for there to be have been an assessment district in the first place. And in addition, one of the, if not an important one, but certainly one of the rationales the city used for approving that project in total was that park. Okay, thanks. Okay, I, my question is answered. So okay. thank you. Right. Um, I do want to report that the ducks are back and that makes Mrs. Davis happy and that makes me happy, so thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, I, I'd agree with the staff recommendation on this. I know we've got a future agenda item. We could bring them back and have further discussion and um, as we do um, with, with this particular item. So I'd take a motion to approve um, the um, staff recommendation to adopt the resolution number 3117 directing the levy of annual assessments for the Cloisters Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District. So moved. We have a motion. We need a second. second. We have a motion by Mr. Heading, second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, great. Um, thanks for that. And we'll move on to our next item um, B2, approval of resolution number 3217, directing the levy of annual assessment for the North Point Natural Area Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance District. Um, and this also, Mr. Leibach. Um, we may see some similarities in this uh, presentation um, here. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, this was a condition of track number 2110, the North Point subdivision, um, also in the uh, late 90s, um, uh, required to offer the city for dedication and construct improvements for park uh, purposes. Improvements include a paved parking area, a stairway providing access to the beach, benches, landscaping, lighting, um, along Toro Lane and other improvements. Um, there's a little irrigated strip of land between um, Toro Lane and the um, freeway that the um, landscaping district uh, maintains um, and uh, provide maintenance uh, of the park and open space area by establishment of a um, landscape lighting maintenance assess assessment district. Um, in April, Council adopted Resolution 16-17, ordering the preparation of the required engineer's report. And the um, uh, following month, um, you adopted 21-17, approving the engineer's annual levy report. Um, the major expenditures include uh, a little over $3,300 for maintenance, um, basically city staff, and about $2,100 in um, uh, utilities. Uh, future improvements include um, uh, wildflower seeding, ground cover, maybe some modest shrubs out there. Um, also, either rock or a fence placement along the toe of the parking lot area to prevent vehicles from um, every once in a while somebody likes to drive up on top there and uh, uh, get closer maybe to the access to the dog beach. I'm not sure why they're driving up there. Um, the assessment district has about a $26,000 capital reserve. 
um, recommend council conduct this final public hearing and then adopt resolution 32-17 approving the levy of the annual assessment for the North Point Landscape Lighting Maintenance Assessment District for fiscal year 2017-18. Thank you and I'm happy to answer any questions on this item too. Thanks Rob. Uh, questions for Mr. Leivik from council? Any uh, questions? Uh, yeah, the only question I have is: ha Have there any been any complaints from the residents about maintenance in this assessment district? Other than um, over mowing of the um, um, natural area um, or under mowing of it, uh, um, we've received both complaints that we did too much vegetation removal and um, also not enough uh, vegetation okay. removal. And, and is it all staff maintained, no contracts? Um, minor contracts for uh, electrical or plumbing issues that we couldn't handle in-house. So okay. mainly um, in-house staff. Thank and with the natural area, there really shouldn't be too much maintenance um, for that um, area. Okay, thank you. John? No? See, no? Um, I have one speaker slip for this. Uh, Betty Winholtz, that's the only speaker slip I have. Betty Winholtz, I want to thank you for the discussion you had at your May meeting regarding uh, at this assessment district, I thought it was important to address some of those questions, and, the, and you did. I, I do have a concern that, um, as with the Cloisters um, assessment district, the uh, engineering report uh, ordered by the court said that you need to be really specific and identify exactly what's going on and where it is. And I would like to ask that that happen with this district as well. The report that you get is kind of a cookie cutter report and it's not specific to this area. And I think it's important that it be very specific about what is and what is not being done there in a more exact way. Um, a lot of the money goes towards the strip in front of the million dollar houses and nothing down in the natural area. And as stated, it really shouldn't be, but um, at least it should not look um, barren. And so I'm glad to hear that there is some intent to do some reseeding and uh, make up for that um, cutting that happened that shouldn't have happened. Um, I want to say that I very much uh, am in favor of both of the assessment districts because they were a condition of Coastal Commission approval uh, because these homes are right on the uh, beach or the ocean, both assessment districts, and it's, it was important to get um, that commitment from the owners at that time to have these assessment districts in order to get the approval of the Coastal Commission to have those developments approved. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. I don't have any more speaker slips. I'll close public comment and bring it back to council. Um, just wonder, Rob, if you can respond to the engineer's report on this. I agree that the engineer's report is the minimum require meets the minimum requirements of an engineer's report. Um, we could, um, in future engineer's report, add a little bit more detail regarding the specific maintenance of the district um, in the discussion section. Rob, as far as um, uh, is there the opportunity as far as just if we chronicle the work that's been done, you know, as we come up with a new assessment, we can have a basically a an as found as left of what um, what the the year previous year was and what what maintenance you know we have we can reflect to the engineer's report and then we'd say oh by the way last year based on the engineer's report this is the work that was done I mean I, do we have record of that as we do all the work out there um, we don't have specifically what was being done we have track hours what was being done um, we could um, uh, work on, uh, especially once we implement our city works program, a little bit more. Um, that would be great. Um, a detail okay. in those reports. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, open up for questions from council. John, Marlis, Red, Matt. Okay, no questions here. I'd report uh, support uh, staff recommendation and take a motion. I move that we approve resolution number 32-17 directing the levy of the annual assessment for the North Point Natural Area Landscaping and Lining Maintenance Assessment District. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Henning, second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5-0. So can we take a short recess and then we'll come back for our next business item and uh, 
we'll take a, a five minute recess at this point. Everybody okay with that? Okay, good. All right, welcome folks. Uh, welcome back. Moving on to the next item on the agenda is uh, our first business item, C1, and that's public employee conditional appointment and conditional approval of employee agreement between the City of Moore Bay and Martin R. Lamelli for the position of interim city manager. And uh, this staff report um, delivered by Mr. Smollinger. Craig. Yes, so uh, thank you. Uh, Craig Smollinger, currently acting city manager and finance director until tomorrow, assuming this, uh, <laughs> this agenda item gets approved. So. And you've done a great job. I'll, I'll say that one more yeah, time. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, beginning on, on May 12th, um, our former city manager um, submitted his resignation. And um, I agreed to do some acting work in, until council moved forward with either a interim or permanent recruitment and appointment and working through that process. So um, what council did is they formed a subcommittee to, to move forward with producing a job recruitment brochure um, for the interim city manager position. Um, that process um, included posting um, of, excuse me, I'm going through the dates here. Um, posting of that job recruitment brochure on the city's website from May 3rd, May 30th through June 9th. Um, the city received six separate applications for that um, interim job placement. Um, the council subcommittee vetted um, those six individuals and brought forward the three um, candidates according to the job recruitment brochure that mo more clearly identified with the desirable traits, experiences, and um, qualities of a, a future interim city manager. Um, the council as a whole interviewed those three individuals during closed session um, and unanimously came to um, the same, um, excuse me, conclusion with um, the number one candidate. And we are here tonight to hopefully approve an employment agreement with Mr. Martin Lamelli, um, who's sitting out there in the crowd and was already introduced to serve as the next interim city manager for the city of Morro Bay. Um, just going over and, and seeing um, Marty's expansive uh, experience as a city manager, 23 years for the city of Laverne, which I actually worked on many years, or worked at many years ago, and also several stints as an interim city manager. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Marty if you want to have any words, or if not, I'll turn it back to council. Oh, excuse me. Um, excuse me. There's there's one um, specific in the actual subject line of the staff report, which reads public employee conditional appointment um, and con conditional approval of the employment agreement. And that condition was making sure that the selected candidate, Marty, um, passed his live scan and background and all that fun stuff. And I'm pleased to report he did. So um, we would request that that conditional um, note be removed from the action tonight. Okay, great. Thank Mr. O'Malley. Mr. Yep. Mayor, members of the council, it's a pleasure and honor to serve as your interim city manager. My preference really is to be called the transitional city manager because my goal is to help transition from your past manager to your new permanent manager, and I'll work diligently towards that effort with your staff. Your staff is very impressive. I've worked with them a little bit in the last few days, and uh, I am pleased to be here as a resident and as a citizen of Morro Bay. Thanks. Thanks, Marty. Um, any questions from council? All right. Thanks. And then we'll get into questions. Thank you, Mr. O'Malley. Um, so any for any questions from I I just one, one point of clarification. I, um, Craig, I know you said uh, the subcommittee vetted the six applicants. Actually, the, the entire council uh, vetted all six applicants. I just want to be clear for, for the audience in that as well. And with that, um, 
I don't have any speaker slips for this item, so I don't have any public comment. And if there's no uh, questions or discussion, oh. uh, we'll just go into discussion. Maro, okay, so on, yeah. on that. I just have to say that I am absolutely delighted to welcome Mr. Lamelli to um, our town and to this job. Um, we are so fortunate to have found such an outstanding candidate, and he lives right here in Morro Bay, and he cares about our city. So. Uh, of course, I'm going to support it. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, I too support um, the appointment of uh, Marty Lamelli. I just want to speak to the process, um, I, and I want to thank the mayor uh, as part of the subcommittee. Um, I think it was very uh, succinct, quick, um, rapid, but also very fruitful in terms of the process that we undertook. And uh, thanks to council for vetting that and, and um, approving that process. Um, we actually had three um, very viable, capable candidates. Uh, Mr. Lamelli did stand out in in my opinion, and I believe our opinion, um, as the candidate of choice. And as Marla said, it's great to have somebody that is committed here living in the community and, and will be living in the community in the future um, to be our interim city manager. And so um, I wholeheartedly support this. And I also want to offer my thanks to Craig, who has been responsive um, continuously in anything that we have asked him. Um, he's executed his interim position with um, all candor and um, uh, honesty and trust. Um, he He's very complete in, in his responses. Um, he did it with excellence, but most of all, his attitude remained positive and upbeat, and I know he's tired. Um, and so um, I just want to offer my thanks to you um, and your staff, because I know that your staff had to step up as well um, to help fill in for some of the holes that were there when you were away. Um, you didn't miss a beat. Things just seemed to move really, really uh, smoothly during the transition. So I want to offer my thanks to you. And we're glad that you're you're here um, in Morro Bay. Thanks. Thanks, John. Matt? Well, um, there's nothing more to be said. You guys did a great job. But um, uh, Marty, uh, welcome. And um, I think it really speaks to uh, he, you and your wife just moving to town, be willing to take this after many years of doing this in other municipalities. So this really shows your dedication. So welcome to the team, and I really um, look forward to working with you. Um, and also, Craig, um, you bring up John, everything he did, but he also did it on crutches. So um, thank you very much, and um, I think it's going to be great um, working. I know that I bet you're going to it's going to work perfectly with Mr. O'Malley. So welcome, and thank you. Red. I agree with everything that's been said. <laughs> that's, the, that's the easy way of, uh, of doing it because really all, all things have been said very well. Um, but I, I can't help but to, to echo the thanks as well to um, Craig for your work. Uh, Dana as well, um, very, very thankful for all that and, and as well as all the department heads. Um, and Mr. Lamelli, thanks for retiring here in Morro Bay and then be willing to to not stay in retirement and actually be interested enough to to come uh, serve the um, city in which you now live and reside. Um, that's pretty special, so um, look forward to that. Thanks very much. Um, with that, if there's no other uh, discussions on that, I'd take a motion to approve um, uh, item C1. Anybody for a motion on that? Yeah, I would uh, move approval of the employment agreement between the city of Morro Bay and Martin R. Lamelli for the position of interim city manager. A second. second. <laughs> I, I, I think I think we had a, 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 a motion by Mr. Heading and a second by Marlos so okay. McPherson, um, Councilmember McPherson. Um, any further discussion? None. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Five zero. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Marty. And with that, um, next item on the agenda: our water reclamation facility program update. And. Mr. Livick. And this is specifically related to the um, project schedule um, that was first presented to you at the um, June 13th meeting, but you did not have the opportunity to provide um, direction to staff um, with. So um, the recommendation has been crafted to allow that uh, um, discussion and direction to staff. Um, 
in the June 13th staff report, we had a, a proposed schedule of um, performing the peer review, um, which um, is completed on June 7th. Um, then taking it to WERFCAC um, July the 5th, CFAC July the 12th, PWAB uh, July 19th, and then City Council August 8th, followed with any requisite um, changes to the rate study based on direction from City Council. Back to City Council on the 12th of September. Um, a couple of community workshops sometime between September 13th and the 22nd, and then um, a Prop 218 hearing, uh, public hearing on November 14th. Based on what we heard at that June 13th um, council meeting and discussions um, internally, um, we have revised that schedule and bringing it only to the um, advisory body that is specific to the water reclamation facility um, project, and that would be our WERFCAC uh, committee, which contains representatives from both our PWAB and our planning commission on that, and um, citizens uh, finance committee on that uh, WERFCAC committee. That would be still on July the 5th, then back to council um, that next week, um, July the 12th, um, based on council direction of that meeting, um, revisions to the rate study, and then to council again on August 22nd um, to start the Prop 218 process. Again, two community workshops. Um, in the time between the um, um, start of the Prop 218 process and the 218 hearing, which would be the public hearing would be is tentatively scheduled for um, October the 10th. Um, we request that uh, um, council provide specific direction regarding um, the schedule for um, the review of the um, the peer review process and um, discussions of their record discussion of their recommendations with the various um, advisory bodies. That concludes my report and happy to answer any questions. Okay, great, thanks for that. I have one speaker slip for public comment on this item. We'll open it up for questions from council and then uh, following that we'll open up for public comment and then discussion. Uh, back to council for discussion. So I'll look to my right for um, questions for uh, staff. Uh, I Carlos? think the only question I have uh, um, is would we be expecting any kind of a different review by the other two advisory boards or would they just be asked to comment on the uh, report generally or is there some specific expertise that they might bring to it? I think our intention was to get this in front of the public more times um, than just that one advisory body meeting based on our interpretation of what robust uh, uh, public comment was. Okay, and um, could you just reiterate again, f just mostly for the folks in the audience, uh, where we're at with this process and what's going? When is the public going to see the report? So uh, the report is. Um uh, near final right now, uh, final draft. Um, it will be published in the WERFCAC agenda on um, this Thursday um, and to in preparation for the uh, July 5th WERFCAC agenda item. So um, um, they will see what the um, peer review have recommended. They have a few recommendations for us um, and we're hoping to discuss that with the committee and um, ultimately with council and the public. Okay, and, and again, the directions to the peer review committee uh, Oh, no holds barred, I think, is what you said. That's that's were my exact words when they <laughs> asked me how much they wanted, uh, uh, how much I, how much comment I wanted from them, and I said, give it, give it to all of it, give it all to us. All right. um, anything that you see, um, in addition to the two specific. Um, uh, items that we were to look at, right. um, anything else you see with the project for um, um, benefit of the community. So it, really looking for uh, some cost control measures and cost reductions and... Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Marlis. John? Thanks, Rob. Um, 
thanks for the opportunity to meet and chat about this as well. Um, I've been asked by a number of uh, folks in the community um, if if you could just comment on um, the rationale for choosing just four people for the peer review um, as opposed to maybe eight, twelve, or a larger group. Um, we, we wanted the group small enough so that we could get the work done in a day's time. Um, we looked to other public works professionals in the public sector that had recent experience in uh, developing, designing, and constructing large wastewater projects, and there happen to be four in the um, um, our region that have are either in the process or have completed that process. Um, that's really the basis of that, um, is uh, um, these are um, experienced members of the public works community and um, um, are experts in what they do. Great. Um, and, and in the staff report, um, will you be um, providing information on their backgrounds um, as further elaboration of what you've just stated in terms of their qualifications to be on the peer review panel? Yes, I don't think we'll supply their complete resumes, but we'll be providing some background information. Good, because so, again, that was a community question that is uh, continued to be asked. Um, uh, I understand possibly, just in, in asking around that, um, there may be difficulty getting a wharf CAC quorum because of the holiday. Do you know how many wharf CAC members um, have committed to attending or how many you might have out of the total number of folks that are on the committee? Only two have said they cannot be there and we're waiting to hear from two um, um, holdouts. We um, have uh, emailed them, but um, if we don't hear from them, we'll give them a call in the morning. So we have how many? We have nine, nine total nine. members, um, so we know we have a quorum at this point in time. Okay, so um, you, you, if you had a quorum, you would go ahead and, and do the meeting yes. just with a quorum. Okay, um, and then um, the uh, um, uh, the date of July fifth um, for the Wharf CAC meeting, and then um, the July eleventh uh, City Council meeting. What um, would be um, the content of the agenda um, you're anticipating for the council meeting and what might you be looking for from in terms of our direction on the 11th? So we'll present the findings of the group in a white paper format with a staff report cover report supplemented by an addendum based on the WERF CACs analysis because um, publication of the council staff report will occur the morning after the uh, WERF CAC meeting, so it'll probably need an addendum to that staff report um, um, rather than completing the report. Um, I'll work with our clerk and uh, city manager on that, um, whether we can roll it into the report before publication. So what we'll be asking for is to review uh, the findings of the committee and provide direction on um, those items that they recommend, whether um, you concur and want to make those um, changes to the project. And would you anticipate um, a um, uh, an opportunity, significant opportunity for public input at that meeting? Yes, um, as usual, I would suppose. And okay. yes, all right, good. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Um, so I guess John's last comment makes me um, or question makes me think of two questions before I get to mine. In terms of the Wharf CAC meeting, in terms of public comment, um, you had, would anticipate, Rob, that folks in the public will be able to comment on the reviews brought to us by the peers. Yes? Yes. And then Either yeah. in writing um, prior to or after the, you know, at the meeting or public, you know, testimony at the meeting. Okay. And then also another part of the, um, at that point um, with the peer review, people will also be able to um, listen to what the reviews were and then make comments about or suggestions about um, different directions that um, they might force, would like the Wharf CAC to um, present to council? Correct. Okay, got it. And then um, 
in terms of my question is, looking at your timeline, the, um, uh, um, the adjusted timeline with this peer review, how do you, um, I, on one hand, I know that you wouldn't have given us a calendar if you don't think that the review process and the questions could be brought up and fit into the timeline with the, the possible 218 vote coming in the next three or four months. So do you, um, do, do you think that realistically that is all going to fit within that schedule? Yes, we have a, a good month to make revisions to... Um, the um, rate study um, based on direction from uh, um, council at that meeting. I suppose that um, based on your prerogative, this um, and what you hear at that uh, from public testimony, you could always adjust this schedule. But um, I believe that um, the um, items that will be in the peer review are clear and concise enough that should be able to make decisions based on that staff report. And so with that, the, the, the ultimate calendar of the entire project, this can fit into it there, um, in terms of if there is any large groundbreaking things coming up that you think it can all fit within the schedule? Yes. Um, there is float in the existing schedule, but we continue to eat up that float Got it. the more times we delay the project. No, I'm with you. And that dates back uh, more than a decade. Okay, that's all my questions right now. Thank you. Red. Will the WARFCAC meeting be in this building? Yes. Three o'clock? Uh, three o'clock. Typically okay. prior to planning commission, but I don't believe there's a planning commission. That's uh, been that counseled, day. yeah. Okay. So Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Right Wednesday, here. 3 o'clock. Okay, thanks. That's all. I'm going to save. I, I'm, I'm good on questions, so I'll open up for public comment at this part, uh, uh, Rob. So public comment, we've got uh, Tina Metzger. That's the only uh, speaker slip I have. So Tina, come on up, please. Thanks. Anybody else for public comment on this? I only have one public comment. Okay, thanks. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Um, uh, I have questions on the staff report, and I wish this information was given. Um, exactly who are the members of the peer review, and what are their qualifications? Are there any members from the private sector? or qualified moral-based citizens. <clears throat> How are the members of the peer review being compensated for their time? And what exactly is the peer review process? And um, just a general question, are we going to continue to call the project the water reclamation facility? The WERF? Thank you. Thanks, Tina. With that, I'll close public comment. I don't have any more speaker slips for that. And allow uh, Rob to, to respond to the questions. As I stated earlier, sorry about that. Stated earlier in the evening, um, the members on the peer review panel were selected from um, uh, the local public works agencies that um, have staff that have recent experience in large wastewater treatment plant projects. Matt Thompson from City of Paso. Um, um, David Hicks from City of San Luis Obispo, John Waddell, the project manager of the Los Osos Wastewater Treatment Plan Project, and Russ Fleming um, from City of Pismo Beach with their um, 
they're the oldest of the um, wastewater treatment uh, projects in the in the area. No, there were no private sector um, members on the committee, um, nor were there any moral based citizens on the committee. Compensation wise, um, we provided lunch and cookies in the afternoon. Um, what is the peer review process? The peer review process is a process to look at the project and uh, recommend um, changes to it from a value engineering standpoint that improve the project and reduce the costs. Um, the council gave a specific um, direction on a couple of things to look at. Um, one was a, a full tertiary um, facility and the other one would be a secondary facility that could be made full tertiary and then either one of those facilities may be able to have reclaimed water in the future. We looked at that. We also looked at what the um, costs, basis of costs were, the um, in engineer's opinion of probable costs that to Black & Veatch and MKN prepared, looked at um, assumptions on um, engineering, planning, um, those allowances that were in the cost um, estimate. Um, also, the peer review um, were not timid about throwing out other ideas. It could be um, cost savings uh, measures. So um, um, they were not afraid of expressing their opinions um, in um, the, this all day process that we held on June the 7th. Um, that's basic. I, and the last question, will we still call it the WERF? Um, I don't know. Um, I think it still um, can ultimately be a reclamation facility, um, regardless of what the city builds, and um, we ought to look towards that to our future, towards our future, and um, continue to call it that. My opinion. Great, Rob. And as we get into um, discussion, I think. Um, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, the peer review was outlined specifically the way you described it um, at the council meeting when we initiated this, this process. Um, so there wasn't any um, uh, direction as far as um, uh, in the peer review from private citizen, uh, from uh, citizen, more based citizens at that time or private sector um, professional engineers. Um, as far as the WERF goes, uh, the last question, um, when we first well, I shouldn't say when we when we started this process several years ago, and adopted the city goals, um, and those goals were established with the community at m more than a couple of uh, public workshops. Um, it was identified and adopted at that time a water reclamation facility with the goal of it being water reclamation ready. So initially, the goal was. Um, and is still um, to build a facility that is water reclamation f um, ready and phased. That was the initial goal um, as set by the city goals and adopted by city council when we started this process. So um, to change the name to WERF, I'm sure that can be discussed even you know further, but um, uh, at uh, the initial um, uh, designation of a water reclamation facility even in a, in a phased project was designated at that point. So, But that's also something that council can, can discuss further. Um, and I just want to make those those comments along with that. And so uh, as far as discussion, um, I'll look to um, Marlos. You want to start us off on discussion on this? Uh, yeah. I, and I do want to just reiterate the point that you just made because I think it's really important we have not given up the goal of recycling and reusing water. Um, in focusing at this point on phase one, that's exactly what the council originally planned to do. So we have not changed direction in any way, shape, or form at this point. And we've just asked for more information to help us get a better handle on costs. Um, with respect to the question of of, um, how we proceed. I think I'm in favor of just moving forward with the uh, WRFCAC review, and I have a couple of reasons for that. Um, first of all, I think um, 
it's uh, it's almost a mistake to ask the citizens to come to three different meetings to comment about a project. Really, they and we created the WERF WERF CAC um, committee primarily to look at this project, and we included representatives from the other advisory boards on it for that reason. And so they have the history of that project, and I know that the other two citizens committees don't have that history. So to ask them to leap in at this point and make comments about it is almost unfair to them without that historical perspective of what's happened up to this point. Um, I also think we need to clarify uh, what those two, if we were to move forward with that, what we would expect those two citizen uh, committees to look at differently from the WERF because they're looking at the entire project and in fact they have a subcommittee on finance. So they are, they are they have engineers, they have the finance, they have the total picture, and that's really the place where I think we should uh, focus getting citizen input. So the other reason is that I, I, I don't want us to wait for a whole month before this, the council uh, would see the report. And if, if the other two groups meet, we wouldn't see it until August sometime. And that's just too many weeks to lose in this project where time is of the essence. So I would support um, option B. <laughs> Thanks, Marlos. John? Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Rob, for the info again and um, the meeting. Um, so, you know, uh, when I look at this, um, I look at this as a, a milestone project for Morro Bay, maybe the biggest project ever um, that will be done. And um, the, the issue that I have with the agenda that um, you have laid out as the proposed new agenda has, doesn't have anything to do with CFAC or PWAB review. It has to do with citizen review. Um, if you look at this, um, the Wharf CAC, which I agree is the right vetting committee, is a committee that meets from 3 to 5.30 on the day after a holiday. That's the one of the only times that citizens will have um, once they see that staff report on a Thursday to come out and give input on the biggest project uh, possibly in the history of the community. Um, secondarily, I agree with Marlis that you know holding off council review until August is not a good idea. And, and I very much support um, the Jul July 11th um, review of both the peer review um, process that you just outlined and the outcome of that, but also the Wharf CAC input for council. That provides the community at that meeting, July 11th, to give input. Um, but I think there should be inserted after that a special meeting that would allow the community specifically after the period of a week or two to um, absorb, digest, um, hear, uh, and then come and, and, a, and in a workshop style format at an appropriate time in the evening um, uh, after six o'clock or so to give input um, on all of the information that, that they've um, ascertained through both the WARFCAC meeting, our July 11th, meeting and and then move forward with an adjusted schedule thereafter and so I, I'm requesting that we um, allow there to be that robust community support that um, we've asked for and that we not hogtie our community into a um, not well-timed um, holiday related meeting um, where a significant portion of the community might be gone and allow them the opportunity after hearing some of our deliberation to come back and give input. So I, I'm suggesting that we add um, uh, as much as I you know don't want to add a lot of meetings um, to our schedule, um, a special community meeting. Um, and I looked at 8-15, um, August the 15th, as a potential date uh, for that, uh, where we could have uh, a, f a significant number of uh, weeks or a couple of weeks where people could digest everything that they've seen um, and then come and give input to the council on what I believe, again, is a milestone project that's extremely important to the future of the community and, and, and is of concern to a large contingent and broad contingent of the community. So um, um, that would be my um, recommendation. Thanks. 
Thanks, John. Matt? Well, John, you make some good points. Um, I, I hesitate um, leading it out till that um, would be the third week in August after our, our first meeting, after we come back from um, the summer break. Um, the simply because we've stretched this process out a bit and our, the, our citizens or residents have really pushed and said, and voice had, and had their voices heard and said, hey, we want to see this taken care of. And we collectively have listened. And we're saying, okay. And we've introduced, so instead of rushing, I don't know if we're rushing anything. I understand and I do take your point seriously in terms of giving more time to look at it, have the citizens um, or residents look at it, have more time. Um, but the one thing, and that's what was my question when I brought up with Rob in terms of our schedule going ahead and keeping this thing, we've gone through various manifestations of this process over time in the last number of years. So I think with Worf, WORFCAC bringing it to them with these peer recommendations and hopefully getting a good, robust uh, um, a number of community there, I do agree in terms of July 5th. Yes, it is somewhat, somewhat problematic, um, but time is of the essence. Um, and so in coming to us by July 11th, now with that, perhaps I would add in terms of wanting to vet it to the public, John, um, would it be conceivable, would you be agreeable to some sort of PR aspect of it in that week? I don't know how we would present that information into putting it on our website and the special website for the, um, for the, the process, for the project. Um, I just don't necessarily want to see this thing taking another month, um, and actually it would be a month and a half, because if we did it after that first meeting in August, that would be our second meeting in August that we would get any sort of commentary back to after that public, your, 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 your proposed public session. Um, so instead of that, John, my maybe working with that idea was doing some sort of public outreach um, electronically before that. That's my discussion. Red, I'm going <clears> to <throat> excuse me. I'm going to agree with Matt. Um, I I want to have all opportunity for public input for this. But as Rob said, we're using up our float, and I can see <clears throat> I can see the potential for some significant um, project processing. And I think it's important that we get started on it as quickly as we can. July 11th, is, I think, is, is our best date for doing that. Um, and I really appreciate everything that Marla said. I, you hit everything on the, on the head, I think, regarding going to WERFCAC and moving the project along. So. I would go along with Rob's proposed schedule. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I will echo all the comments that were made. Um, uh, in particular, um, Marlos, it was great to start off some of the comments about um, the focus of our WERFCAC and, um, and keeping it focused on that. I think it, it was a reminder for me, anyway, as we think about um, any particular item that we might want to vet through the community, um, we, we'd be, and I think we have been, when we were talking about robust input on the Prop 218, we wanted to spread that out there. But now we're talking about something more technical that is that we, and we formed that WERFCAC board specifically for those tasks. So I, I think it's, um, I think it's prudent for us to be able to maintain that. So I, I'd be in support of the revised schedule. Um, one of the concerns, I share the concerns about getting this back to council sooner rather than later. And part of the reason um, to get it back sooner would be to have that ability, as suggested by um, John, Mr. Heading here, that uh, we have, um, one, we're, we're not really sure how the peer review is going to come about. We'll get some recommendations from WORFCAC. It'll give us the opportunity to discuss, I, you know, I could see, um, uh, we'll have the ability 
to give a, variety, a varied direction. And whether or not we want to discuss specifically uh, an, an August 15th date or uh, I penciled in August 9th or whatever, um, any of those dates for another workshop, I think um, it gives us that ability to fill that in. But I think it was, for me, it was more important to have, uh, have it come back to council sooner and f have it focused with our WRFCAC board. All of our, all those members on our board are part of those various boards that you so nicely laid out for us, Marla. So that's that's important, and um, having it come back to us will give us that ability uh, if we are so inclined to um, to adjust a, a, another workshop for you know somewhere in August to do that. And l l let me just uh, finish. Yeah. So um, whether or not we want to discuss a specific date to do that, and it seemed like John brought something up. Matt was talking about something as well. Um, it might be prudent for us to just agree to the schedule as laid out and um, and then have staff uh, come back at the July 11th meeting with some options uh, for us if we do want to have those um, uh, workshops. Um, and that might give us the ability to, to be a little, have a little bit more thought into what that might look like instead of you know trying to figure it out on the fly right here. Um, not that we couldn't do that. I'm not saying that we can't do that, but I was just hoping that we would um, uh, see where we'd go with that conversation. So those are my comments. I'd, I'd like to be able to pursue this um, on the proposed schedule or the revised proposed schedule. Um, and um, those are my comments. And if anybody want to continue that as far as the specific workshop date that was brought up by Mr. Heading, um, I'll yeah, take some I, conversations. I just wanted to say that I, I do think it's a good idea to have a public workshop and, and in a more informal way where citizens can, can come in and they don't have to come up and, and stand at the microphone. I would like to see that happen. I'm wondering if, John, you'd like to give up your uh, date, July uh, 17th. So, so here's, uh, let me just comment, and maybe you misunderstood what I said. I'm not suggesting that the July 11th council meeting not occur and that our review not occur at that meeting. I, I wasn't wanting to change that at all. My point is this. Um, the project may be taking a left turn significantly. And, and uh, for me to see um, um, a one-time recommendation vetted by the WARFCAC um, on July 5th and for um, the potential um, a major value engineering of the project um, to occur um, with no input from my community um, on July 11th makes no sense to me because on July 12th it talks about revisions to the rate study. You can't revise or begin revising a rate study until you know, let me finish, yeah, what know. the components of the cost are. And, and so the problem that I see is that we do have the July 11th uh, meeting that we will be discussing um, our response to WARFCAC and the peer review process, and we'll have community input. But then I'm suggesting, and it could be a date closer, uh, 15th I just pulled out of the hat, I certainly could give up my date. I don't have a problem with giving up my date on the 15th. It could be the 15th of July. Um, I, I suggest that we have one meeting in there for the community, not by um, electronic means, but I want my public here to directly speak to me and ask questions and, and have a back and forth with regard to what they see. And so that's what I'm recommending. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I totally agree. Marlis? No, I, I agree, too, and I think that's a nice offer because I think it needs to be sooner rather than later. Especially, I agree. Yep. Yeah. Any other comments? Yeah, I think, and I think there's two different things we're talking about. I think we have the proposed new calendar, and then we have the idea of giving um, the public access, um, in, uh, um, additional access, and to c collectively... Um, kind of add something to your commentary, John, um, there are con our constituents as well. It's collectively as the council. And so we have a, a, a very voiced um, purpose here, and that's why we're here. And so I would agree. I think, I, Jamie, you pointed it out, I, I would be in agreement with the proposed new schedule. Um, and then I would be willing, with what you're saying, John, um, to definitely having some sort of uh, um, additional community <laughs> in-person uh, um, situation going on. That would be totally uh, fine with me. 
and, and I, so, no, I just want to just thanks, Matt. And I, you know, my the 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 use of the word uh, my constituents as a non sequitur is just one of those things. I know yeah. it's our constituents, yeah. so yeah. I just want to clarify. Thank you for <laughs> bringing that up, and I, I realize they're yours as well. And I'll, I'll say our. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks. Did you have some teacher? <laughs> Yeah, I would be happy to have a public workshop where we could have two-way communication. But again, sooner, if we could do it during that same week of, of July the 11th, um, I would be all for that. Cool. Um, so I, I guess as far as uh, I have another suggestion, so basically looking at this second uh, table here that we're all discussing, and that one being... City Council, July 11th. Um, so um, we have peer review, WORF CAC review, City Council, July 11th, and then revision to rate study, July 12th to August 11th during that period. Perhaps, um, you know, during that same time period, we could have another line item that says um, outreach during July 11th to August 11th to be determined. And... Um, and you know that's part of the process. We'll figure out what that date is during our July um, 11th council meeting. So we we know that we're we're looking towards a specific um, date and um, uh, time where we can have a workshop. And it, it doesn't really nail us down to a specific date, but it, it does mean that we have the revisions to the rate study between July 12th and August 11th, and we also have community outreach between July 11th and August uh, 11th. Um, via workshop, yeah, yeah that, that's fine. My my real goal is to have that opportunity, you know, I, I um, that. not electronically but publicly to yeah. have that back yeah. and forth. So yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, sure. and so I just need some uh, council or staff feedback, please. Um, so the goal with the July 11th city council meeting was for the council to provide direction to staff that we could relay to the rate consultant to this is the parameters that you're going to be looking at to um, calculate rates or these are the two alternatives that you're going to calculate rates uh, based on. So we would send them off to that direction. We have a public workshop after that. There's, mm -hmm. I don't see a way to roll that feedback back to the rate consultant without having council give some sort of further direction based on the outcome of that public meeting. Um, could occur at the August, I don't have my calendar here, August 8th meeting of council. The, uh, but then that would only give three days for the report that you need, the, the rate study. Yes. And, and so let me just clarify, you know, as far as I understand it, it it's a plug number. I mean, the, the, all the background information is there. We change some some cap, capital contributions or capital infrastructure costs. It's really not that big of an issue from what I understand. From what I understand, that so, is correct. So the also. time, yeah, it's not going to take two months to do that. And I, I'm asking, I guess, is... It's my understanding. So um, I do realize that there would have to be a council meeting after that. Uh, I, what I'm saying is I think we, we owe it to our community, our community collectively, to have that meeting and then consider that input and then make the decision about where we're headed. So um, if that could happen on the 8th would be the next uh, regular kick because we're not meeting on the tw uh, 25th of July, correct? Right. Yeah. So the rate study would be just pushed back maybe a week because of the, really, it's pretty simple so thing to do. So, Rob, looking at the, sorry, Joe, um, just kind of looking at the calendar with the, with the recommendations going forward, if council direction is received, with how to proceed with that rate study um, in that direction is not on the July 11th date that would kick that off to the August 8th date yes so if we had that direction on August 8th um, in your estimation of the revisions that would be need essentially as Mr. Pannoni points out would be more or less back to the original calendar of events up at the top which would kind of have the domino effect going forward 
So where I was going is more likely than not, um, if we had direction on August 8th with how to proceed with the revisions to that rate study, um, <coughs> even in a condensed version, we would not get the rate study back to council until probably September 12th with a couple week turnaround, Rob? Does that sound about right for the rate study? Um, probably, although they speculative at this point because we don't know what is going to happen at the July 11th meeting. If it's clear and we have clear direction, um, I think the, um, let me just look at this for a second, sorry. Um, oh. It may be just splitting the difference between the two of them. I think we have a month's difference between the two of them right now. I think we, there's a council meeting in between those two that we could probably um, put into the mix if uh, there's a significant change with the um, to the rate study at the August 8th, significant change in direction from council at the August 8th meeting input in the rate study, we may have to kick that out. But if there's not, then we can proceed with the new schedule. What I'm saying is, I think the new schedule based on that, that having that second meeting on August 8th has a plus or minus a two week uh, period in there, depending on what the outcome of that meeting is. I don't think we'll use up that whole month, the difference between the two schedules. I think we'll use up more closer to two weeks of it. Well, to me, it's worth two weeks uh, allowing the community to come back and and. Ref it's a multi-million dollar project. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's so, a no. It's yeah. sorry. Is this suggesting that we, um, on the time frame here, have our council meeting on July 11th with this item, and then again on August 8th? Yeah. And then closer to the July 11th, having some uh, a workshop, public workshop, that uh, would be, the results would be presented at the council meeting of August 8th. Correct. If I could add also, um, is it all right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I understand in person is in very important, um, but sometimes people need time to ruminate on these things. So the electronic versions, um, will that be included, you think, Rob? in terms of putting a lot of this data. Oh, definitely. On the, okay, got it. Because some people do both, yeah. yeah. So uh, we, we, need to, we also need to recognize that we set a council schedule deliberately. Um, so we only have one council meeting in, in July. And um, I think our city staff and others have made um, plans earlier in the year. So the amount of resources that we have to do this or the availability of staff um, I, I'm verbalizing the consideration of that and, and the realistic of that, and, and I, I think we need to understand that. So, um, you know, I can also see this coming back um, in more of a, um, you know, kind of this two-step two process. If we do it July 11th, um, perhaps maybe it's not a workshop. Maybe it's just a second city council meeting solely dedicated to that in that in that format, John, where we're, we're getting... You know, we're getting that input once, you know, twice, and having that discussion. It so, certainly could be, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, and I just used workshop uh, as, yeah. and, as and a. So I, I guess that. So based on this, um, if we're not, unless we're, we can be very, very definitive in this. Um, I think we would. Based on this discussion, we can come back. Um, July 11th, um, and we would have. Um, some uh, guidance from staff on options to yes. have have that um, either August eighth or uh, somewhere in the period between July and uh, July twelfth uh, and August eleventh, which is that same period for the rate study. And I'm just looking at the table. So I mean, I, I think be between now and our July eleventh uh, council meeting, with a uh, based on these conversations, we would. Um, be able to have some more definitive options on how we want to do that um, that next second outreach 
even and including August 8th, as a, um, which would be our city council meeting, as a kind of a dedicated um, uh, WERF peer review um, analysis and review. Yeah, and I'm comfortable with that coming at the 11th and making a decision then about yeah. when that could occur. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and maybe you know, based on this, staff will have a little bit more information on on what's what's most feasible, um, based on resources and and uh, um, time. Does that sound? I'm looking for some feedback and some whether or not that that makes sense. Yes, because I think we're going to have to um, find a facility for this also. I don't have the schedule in front of me with what's available on what days. So All the more I, reason I to give you the time to, to do I, I don't yeah. know that we could schedule that right in this meeting right yep. now. Yeah, all, uh, all the more reason. Yeah. yeah, all the more reason. Yeah. Okay. So with, with that, then um, um, let's... Let's kind of restate where we're going with this. Um, so basically, um, I sense that there's agreement from council that we would agree to pursue the, this um, second proposal schedule that's um, identified here, um, bringing the peer review back July 11th. Um, and that basically, beyond July 11th, um, under the next line item where it says revisions to rate study between July 11th and August 11th, um, we would um, include um, um, some other public outreach and even to include um, that on our August 8th city council meeting as an option. We'll bring back a couple alternatives okay. for that uh, at that meeting. Okay. Any, uh, so are we... Does that make sense there? From, yes, from so council, either at, and staff? at the August 8th meeting or if there were some convenient time in between those two that we could schedule a workshop yeah. and have everything ready to go for, we would bring that as an alternative date also. Yeah, okay. So this is receive and file anyway, right? And yes. direction on which schedule and we I, were looking yeah, to go I, with. I, I we'll, think we'll make sure it's language enough to be able to do something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I, that's that's where I was discussing that. I, there's consensus to that from council that the um, proposed the alternate proposed schedule that was laid out in our staff report, where it's um, uh, peer review for June 7th, um, WERFCAC Ju July 5th, City Council July 11th, revisions to rate steady July 12th to the August 11th, and to include um, community outreach in that time frame. And then, um, and then the, um, we would have to look for um, staff input on um, the the 218 process and the, the community workshops beyond the the rate um, workshops. And it actually, really, the city council prop 218 hearing is kind of to be determined based on. Um, uh, based on input, uh, unless we want to hold it to it to that particular date of October 10th. No, and, I, and in fact, I think we need to add into this schedule the August 8th date to make it clear that we're addressing the issue at that date, and and then really the the revisions to the the city council start prop 218. That is to be determined based. We can't really project yeah. at this point. And also, so, Jamie, with what you're saying, more or less, we want to, and Rob, you brought it up, in terms of this vetting uh, um, public outreach, it could happen between the 11th and the 8th, not necessarily on the 8th, correct? And that's what we're saying. Um, just because understanding that time is of the essence, I think my point of view is if as earliest we can do it after that 11th um, meeting, if we can get it together is better than doing it on the 8th because that's going to be a lot of information coming within that two months, three months period and then with that 218. I agree. I yeah. agree. Okay, so I, I think if the simplest way possible. to say this is that we basically want to do the schedule from peer review of June 7th, WERFCAC June, July 5th, and City Council on July 11th. Everything beyond that, we will be able to determine at our July 11th City Council meeting. Yes. That, I think that's the simplest yeah. way to put it. Yeah. And we're all in agreement to that? Yep. Okay. Yes. So I don't think we need a motion on that. We're in agreement. That's the direction, uh, unless we are looking for a specific motion. And uh, so, <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, I, so, so I just want to be 
Yeah, now I'm going to close the loop on that, Joe. So I just want to be clear, based on that last statement, and I'll make the motion if we want. So based on that, I'd make a motion that we um, direct staff to uh, conduct the peer review. Um, the, the peer review would be completed June 7th. The WRFCAC review would be July 5th, 2017. City Council meeting July 11th, 2017. And then beyond that, um, options will be brought forth uh, at the July 11th City Council meeting. Would you take a friendly amendment to include additional community, an additional community meeting? Is yes, to, yeah. include, uh, to include options for additional community outreach. Great. Between the dates of... Uh, and I think that'll be delivered to us at the, that'll be, uh, those options will be given to us at soon the, as possible. the July 11th yes, meeting. Yes, that's right. As soon as possible, huh, Matt? Right. Okay. Yeah. I so guess um, seconding that. So okay. we have a motion and a second. So just to, to restate the motion. Um, so the motion was to uh, perform the, the, the peer review will be um, completed June 7, 2017. The WRFCAC review July 5, 2017. City Council meeting will be conducted on July 11, uh, 2017 for the peer review. Um, and then options for community outreach um, and the rate study um, will be brought to City Council on the July 11 uh, Council meeting. As well as the rest of the things on that schedule. As, re as, yeah. as well as the rest, rest of the, the, the listed items. Right. The revised timetable. So yes. I will second that restated okay. motion. Okay. So I just want to get the nod from Dana that we're, we're good on that. Craig, did you have something? No. No, just okay. a simple right. procedural thing. What Rob first mentioned about the timing between the... Um, WRFCAC review and actually producing the agenda for the July 11th City Council meeting. I understand. Um, I think it would be staff's preference to actually produce that July 11th complete agenda for City Council one day later than normal. On so instead of producing on Wednesday, July 5th, it would be produced on Thursday, July 6th. So it's a complete packet and not just an extra thing sitting out there so it's complete for the public. So okay. that would be our preference. Okay. I, I like that. I, I think it's better to have a complete even if it's just a day. Okay. So Comment. just so we have so we have a motion. So let's let's close the motion and the second at this point and then we can get into so um, so we have a motion and a second. Motion by Mayor and second by uh, Mayor Pertem uh, heading. Um, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries five oh. Further discussion, Matt? Yes, Craig. Um, I just want to um, put out there, and, and Dana, you could um, comment on this. In terms of um, giving public notice for a meeting, it is 72 hours, and we have been for the last uh, number of months doing it a number, uh, I think, 24 hours ahead of time. So even though we would be putting that out a day later, we still would be meeting the, um, the public uh, um, daylight. Excellent point, which I failed to mention, so thank you. No, I just want to, because we're going to have, some, we might have some people who are concerned that this item is coming too fast and with too little information, but however, we are um, definitely meeting the, um, yeah. the, the okay, got it. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I anticipate that more than a, more than two members of city council may <coughs> attend the WRFCAC meeting on July 5th, and if that is the case, I would like to some public confirmation from Mr. Pannoni that it's okay for the council members to attend the WRFCAC meeting and there are certain conditions that go with that. Would, would you please elucidate those? Certainly. The Brown Act allows the count, a, a quorum of council or all council members to attend another body's public meeting that also has its own public agenda, which that WRFCAC meeting will have. But the council needs to say nothing at that meeting. You can sit and listen, but don't during public comment or at any other time, if, if a quorum of you are still in the room, don't say anything. Thank you. Mr. Pannoni, um, could I ask for a clarification on that? Even in the absence of a quorum in that room, given the fact that um, a member from the council may make a statement and it might be visualized on the tape, prior to another council meeting and there might be influence. Is there a difference 
in that kind of to me it's the same kind of a thing where there might be a serial representation of one's opinion if you go up and testify before a quasi committee or a subcommittee of the council um, clarification on that please I understand your point and um, the belts and suspenders approach that I always like to take is don't say anything even if you're the only one there but I think legally if only two of you were there someone one or those two could say something um, but it's a slippery slope so um, I, I'm telling you that I think technically if there's less than a quorum there you could say something my recommendation to you is none of you say anything that evening clear as mud thank you point taken <laughs> thank you um, are there any other final discussion points for this item before we close this item out no, I, I just want to uh, reiterate the date, uh, July 5th, Wednesday, uh, 3 to 5 here at this, in the Vets Hall, and that's when the uh, WERFCAC will meet to hear the peer review report. Correct. I, I just have one more comment, uh, and I know, uh, pardon me if I'm repeating this, but um, just a request on future WERFCAC or WERF uh, updates, just having the ability that the the title, even though it's an update, um, that we know that any wor any worf item update that comes before council, um, that it's in the title that you know discussion for updates, um, the ability to give direction on those that um, item um, is included in that item. So um, you know we don't have to make a special agenda item if there's something. I mean, I know I've, I stated this, and I, I just want to restate that to, to confirm that, you know, in the future, we'll, in the WERF, CAC, the WERF updates, that um, it's titled in a way that we can have those open discussions and give direction. We'll make sure that we add at the end of any recommendation for anything regarding the WERF CAC saying something like we did this time and provide direction deemed appropriate. Thank you. Um, and with that, um, that'll conclude um, item C2. And I just want to, before we go further, we have item A5 that's on consent. So uh, unless there was some progress made on that, um, we certainly can't continue the item if, if we weren't able to, to loop back to that. But um, I'd like to open item A5 back up on consent and um, have that discussion. Uh, any, anybody want to lead in on that? Sure. Um, Ikani and I conferred during the break and uh, Ikani showed me new language that he has developed for the TBID work plan that looks good to me. I believe that it meets my criteria and Mr. Heading's criteria, so I'd like to ask Ikani to read back those work items as revised. Quick comment, Mayor. I also reviewed it. Just FYI, thank you so much, and I appreciate you reading that back. And I had the chance, and I do agree that it meets my criteria, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Connie. All right. So for the addition of vacation rentals and recreation vehicle RV parks to the business improvement districts, uh, we updated the work plan to say with the VR and RV subcommittee meet and layout plan for proper business outreach to all affected lodging industries from September to December. Business outreach will be implemented by the subcommittee and staff. The council procedural process and public hearings will take place March to June. Desired outcome will be agreed upon by lodging industries and the city as to the proper structure. And then uh, we divided out, as Red suggested, the Business Improvement District Law, 1989 law versus the 1994 law. So we stated in the work plan, MBT bid will co consider formalizing under the 1989 or the 94 bid law uh, from September to November. Business outreach to affected lodging will be implemented by T bid and staff October through January and the council procedural process and public hearings will take place from March to June. With the desired outcome will be agreed upon by the lodging industries and the city as to proper structure. That's good for me. Then I'll move approval of A5 as uh, restated. Second. We have a motion and discussion to approve um, 
item A5. I just I, I have a one more question on the um, well actually yeah I have a question on the item before we approve it and move on. So I just want to, so um, it kind of as far as the um, point out point out the um, item for TBIT in which. Uh, we were going to have open the discussion for a uh, general fund contribution. Um, uh, can you point that out? We discussed that as one of the work plans. You got it, Mayor. Yes, it's the bottom, uh, page 26. I'm on page 26. On the bottom where it says revisit the general fund contributions to TBID. Got it. Thank that's you. That's it. Thanks very much. Okay. That's, that's all I have. So we have a motion and a second to approve item A5. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5-0. Thanks for the extra work on that and being able to... Thanks, to, Connie. ...to diligently work through that. Appreciate it. So with um, so that took us back to item A5, um, just as a source of procedure I'd, um, um, that uh, concluded um, all our items on consent. So we're done there, and I'm looking towards um, any staff uh, uh, confirmation on procedures and making sure we're doing okay on that. And uh, so that concludes all the items on the agenda for tonight. It moves us on to council declaration of future agenda items. And uh, look to my left. Um, uh, anybody on that? Uh, um, I'd like to see us take up um, the beginning of drafting a marijuana ordinance sooner rather than later. I support it. Um, so um, just we have a basic comment on that. So we have a schedule that's already, that we've been working towards to adopt that. Um, uh, so basically I'm looking for um, some guidance on this. So we do have, a, we did work through a schedule to get the uh, marijuana ordinance adopted. I just want to make sure that um, we want to agendize an item to review what that schedule is, and um, and to to your point, Red, is to accelerate that process and conclude the ordinance at a, a date sooner than what was proposed to us. Um, for the future agenda schedule that I saw last week, through October, there is nothing about the marijuana ordinance, and. Um, We've had two workshops, <clears throat> and I'm looking for a staff report soon to come to council for us to provide direction to begin writing an ordinance. Okay, so we, we just want to we want an update on the um, uh, marijuana ordinance um, uh, to date, with the option to give further direction um, appropriately. And so, Mr. May, Carnone, oh. can I just ask a question? Um, I'm not going to ask a question. I'm going to make a statement. I, I interpreted the council having appointed a two-person subcommittee for that, that the subcommittee would get together and review the workshop information and make a recommendation to you as a full body with where you'd want to go, um, which is what I thought was the process that was going to be followed. What I'm hearing now is you want staff to come to you, the five of you, with a a synopsis, if you will, of what this workshop has shown with options for the kinds of ordinance that you could um, request to be drafted. Is that what I'm hearing or not? I guess we could do that. I, I, I had not understood that Marlis and I were going to go that far. I thought that Marlis and I were strictly going to develop an outreach program. Right. Um, but I don't mind working with Marlis and staff to develop a report for council to begin direction for an ordinance. That, that's what my typical experience, I'm sorry for assuming, that was my typical experience with ad hoc committees that they, is that what, that's what they are yeah, saying. Yeah, and, and I, saying I, 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 don't, I don't think we, and when we discuss that, I don't think we really outlined um, the specifics to that, uh, and in, in those in that context, at the time it was mostly outreach. Um, so, yeah. um, if it means that we need to kind of have that discussion again to 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 see how we want to 
conduct um, the subcommittee or ad hoc committee, or is it if it's something we just you or, know, or maybe or you can tonight direct staff to bring back to you within some time frame that you want us to bring back to you. Um, I think some that's options. appropriate. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. Yeah, yes, sir, Matt. Um, Joe, I have a question. In terms of the timeline, are we understanding that we have this um, subcommittee that we want to bring these recommendations, and if we agendize this in the next few months, are we up against any sort of timeline uh, chronologically as the new year is coming to have this in place? As long as you have it in place by the end of this year, you're going to be okay. Okay, and uh, the reason I bring that up is knowing that we are looking at agendizing it in October. I don't necessarily know if that's going to give us enough time to. So, in terms of doing this, I think we have to get moving on it to make sure that we're have our bases covered. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, could, could, um, can, I, can I interject yeah. something here? There are issues with the timeline that we have, and we've been talking about it internally. And this maybe hasn't come forward to all of the council at this point. But anything that's getting pushed out through the zoning code, as far as zones and those types of things, it's it's likely impossible that we'll have it in place by January 1 because the zoning code portion of it requires it to go through our process, through planning commission, through city council, two meetings, and then we have to we send it off the package to Coastal Commission to have it certified. Um, and so we're past a timeline where that could really happen. Um, we've also, you know, had co ongoing conversations with the with the Coastal Commission because we're in the middle of a comprehensive update of our general plan local coastal program and the implementation portion of that, which is the zoning code that we weren't going to be processing amendments during this time. So if we are going to be doing that within a time frame that's not coincident with the deliverables and the timeline on the general plan and LCP update. We need to talk to Coastal about that as well. So. If I may interject on that, um, there's, there's two parts to the um, what you have the ability to do something about. There's dispensaries and delivery, and there's manufacturing and testing and um, cultivation. Um, distribution cultivation. okay cultivate cultivation thank you those those f the uh, cultivation manufacturing and testing those you will need to do something with your zoning ordinance but it's prohibited now so you're not gonna you don't need to do something to make sure that someone can't come in and do something you don't want them to do with regard to the delivery and um, dispensary you don't need to do that in your zoning code you can do that in your build business license provisions, so we don't need to go through that, that process. We can use the zoning code if you want to down line to, to precisely include it as part of your zoning code, but you don't need to to regulate it. And you can do that between now and December. So um, now the future agenda item. I just want to make sure we're back to the specific language at hand. and. Uh, um, Red, I just want to make sure that we're restating what the future agenda item would look like. Sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm just trying to do my due diligence after we get into discussions like this. Yeah, um, and I'm not sure anymore what the future agenda so, item is going to look so like because it the the simplest thing may be for Marlis and me to sit down with Ikani and perhaps Scott and flesh out some recommendations for council based upon the workshops. Yeah, we could go either way. So I, 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 we're kind of getting into discussion on the item, so I'm kind of hesitant to, to go much further. Sorry to interject, but yeah. we're almost kind of getting into discussion on the item. I was just hoping that we could, it sounded like just a marijuana update. We could have this discussion. Uh, a process and schedule? Yeah. yeah. Could we have process and schedule for development of the ordinance as the agendized item? If, if you want to bring that back to discuss it, you can, but I don't have a brown act concern of you giving us direction as to what item you want to be brought back, whether you want it to be a subcommittee bringing you back a recommendation or staff working with the subcommittee bringing you back a recommendation or just the staff bringing you back a recommendation. I, I, I'm, I'm in support of just bringing it back an update with um, the uh, input from our subcommittee uh, basic, basically, and then we can have that basically just a, an update and recommendations from that, and then we can uh, have more discussion to, to move it forward. 
it, is that adequate for, for your um, future agenda item? Sure, and when you say update and recommendation, the recommendation would be as to the direction of the ordinance? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We can do that. Um, That's, that is not what Red and I had talked about doing. We had actually talked about um, bringing a report that staff prepared and summarizing the input and laying out some of the options uh, for the council so that the whole council could make some decisions. That's what we had originally planned. But we can go this way if you want us to. I didn't hear those two ends being different, but maybe okay. that's just me. Okay. I, I, I agree with what you said. Yep. Yeah. That, that's what I think you were charged to do, and right. that's it. Right. Yeah. I we're, think you said it too, but sure. Okay. okay. Well, I don't so think we expect you to write more than no. <laughs> Options for how so we can restate proceed. that, and that's what we're going to bring back. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring back for the marijuana agenda item um, a report for council based uh, that staff and the subcommittee will prepare that will lay out some of the options for proceeding with the marijuana ordinance. Yep. Sounds great. And when do you want that item? And um, I look for some input from staff on that as well. So, so we can move as as soon as we're able to meet. I think most of the information we already know. Um, so once we, we meet with subcommittee. Uh, just need direction, compile that together in a few days, and we can get it on the next city council. So, so we can have it. We can have a prepared staff report. Then it's a matter of um, getting it on the agenda, considering the items that we we're just discussing tonight. So, let's phrase it that way, and we'll do the best to get it on the agenda as soon as we can. Okay. And in, in the soonest to bring that forward, just looking at times and dates would likely be August eighth. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That was that was that was good work. Um, anybody anybody else on future agenda items? Uh, I actually have something to suggest. Uh, this was brought to me by um, one of our citizens, and it concerns vacation rentals. And I know that um, the council has made a decision to basically cap them at 250 and wait until the general plan update occurs to deal with an ordinance. But in the meantime, they're kind of. Um, being awarded to whoever is applying. And what that means is that they're concentrated in certain areas of the city, and that's really what we would like an ordinance to not do. So that's one issue. The second one, uh, and this was a concern uh, from uh, somebody who has a hotel, that these vacation rentals pay residential water and sewer rates, and they, in fact, are operating as businesses, some of them exclusively as vacation rentals, and it's not fair to the hotel owners who obviously have to pay much higher commercial rates. So that's something that we could tackle in the new rate study if we were interested in addressing the issue. So I would like to agendize that issue. How does that fit with your TBID uh, vacation rental review conceptually? Not? Yeah, we, asking me personally, as, as, as a board, we never look, this is something new. Um, I'm, I'm, to, sorry, go ahead. No, we just, it's its an interesting thought. Um, so let me, so Scott, I'm going to look to you to, to kind of give us some comments on that. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, yeah, we're, we've been tasked and directed by the council to develop a vacation rental ordinance through the general plan and LZP update process, which is what we're doing. Um, there's a cap at 250. That's the cap that was placed on it through the moratorium. Um, the over-concentration, I'm not so sure about that. I've not received any complaints about that, or nor have I received any complaints related to the operation of vacation rentals within the last several months. So I'm not sure what the issue is, but I'm not seeing it. Um, but maybe they're just not calling us and letting us know. That could be the case. Maybe they're just telling you. Um, on the other side of things, I don't know, as relates to the rate study and charging them commercial rates, I'm 
unaware of any cities that actually do that. We'd need to do research and to see what the you know, ramifications of that would be. Um, these are really usually considered residential uses. Typically, when you incorporate them into your ordinance, they're not typically considered necessarily commercial. I've seen ordinance do them, do different things with them, though. I would anticipate that when we do develop an ordinance, we'll resolve the issue that Marlis bring uh, that Councilmember McPherson brings up. Sorry, um, uh, that the over concentration issue. We'll probably have distances between them, uh, you know, and that'll be part of the the, the ordinance you know framework that, that that's developed. Is sort of my take on it. Yeah, and that is the that is the way that most of the ordinance are written. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we we already have 250, and then as some of them drop off, there's a waiting list, and they're going to go in anywhere. And uh, since I have about six within a block of my house, I know that they are concentrated. <laughs> so, but, but but the way that the ordinance, the Morton program is written, it doesn't matter how many of those 250 are issued if they don't meet the new regulations. They're going to have to. Um, they're going to have to meet them, even if they have a permit now, because this permit now is temporary. So if they're over concentrated, and we have a thousand, somehow there's going to be a lottery or something to figure out how to spread them out. Oh, that's that's helpful. That, that'll be part of the conversation. Is what do we do with the existing ones? Do you grandfather them? Do you not? Do you do something right. like uh, Mr. Pannoni suggested? So yeah, I mean that'll be part of the conversation and the development of the ordinance. And, um, we, wrote, and we wrote the moratorium so they don't have a vested right. Okay. To mm -hmm. what they already were given. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to hear yeah. that. And I'll, just for the record, uh, I received the same concern, and I just want to make that known, and that was one of the items I had, but thank you for bringing it up. So there's a request for future agenda items on vacation rentals and uh, basically a discussion on what the cap is and what we can do to um, uh, address the vacation rental moratorium and... Um, that we currently have. That, that's what I get out of this. And so I, I, I guess if we're, so I just want to be, we'd be opening up that conversation, but we are in the process of addressing this. It's just taking time to yeah. do it. So we want to, so your question is, can we accelerate that is, is what we're doing. So can we bring back um, a vacation rental um, dis discussion item to update us on that so we can get a picture of what that would look like, and then we would have option to give direction on on that. Would that be? We a, could certainly agendize a discussion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're already working to resolve the issues that I, were raised. I understand. So, I mean, yeah. I, I, and I, because I, I, I hesitate that we're going to be, we're in the process of doing that. So when, when? I'm concerned that we are bringing something to you that's going to create a potential. Um, belief that there'll be something you can do yeah. that that further defines what the moratorium is yeah. already doing, yeah. and that's probably not likely. And so I hate so, to just so basically, let's, let's, let's just stay the course. Let's just stay the course. So, I mean, so you're, you're asking to agendize it, and um, and so we just need to have that discussion on whether or not we want to. Agendize Does the that. fact that we describe the fact that, that the moratorium doesn't give anyone a vested right, and even those people that have them now are going to have to meet whatever the requirements are? Does that alleviate the concern? I know it's it's not going to be as quick as you may have wanted it, but does that leave at least? alleviate the concern you had to so, discuss it. So uh, when would we actually be getting that back and, and actually have an ordinance in place? So I, I guess we're under future agenda. I'm going to kind of reel us back a little bit. So we're in, under future agenda items. We should be discussing what are future agenda items, and we're kind of getting into discussion. So I, I guess at this point I would ask that we um, have the discussion of what our future agenda item is and and then we can conclude. And if we need to, to take some time to find out some more information on whether or not we should have a future agenda item, maybe we can to do that. And sorry if I'm being a little assertive on this, but I, I think we're having lots of discussion and not really identifying what our future agenda item. So um, 
then that, that would be my suggestion. We, we either conclude this or maybe do a little bit more work to find out what our future agenda item would, would look like. It, it, I guess it's the same thing as the marijuana ordinance. It's, it's a request to um, um, move it forward more quickly. And if that can't be done outside of the context of the process, then it doesn't fall within the purview of a, a future agenda item. And I don't want to get into discussion on that either. Yeah. I mean, candidly. That, that, that would, yeah. That would be my, my remark on the vacation rental. So um, any other remarks or comments on where we want to go with the vacation rental future agenda item? I prefer to let the process work. Thank you. Anybody else? Marlos? Um, so we, we won't do the future agenda. I, I guess it would be actually good to actually have more discussion with staff on, on maybe what the status of that would be. It, it, certainly, if any of you are hearing complaints about the operation of any particular vacation rentals, please bring them forward. We have policies in place and operational requirements for them. So we can address issues that you might be seeing out there. I'm happy to do that. We have code enforcement officers that can take care of that. They're really very effective when they go out and to get compliance. So if you are seeing that or hearing it, certainly direct folks to us, please. Okay. okay. Anything else? Okay, with that, um, we'll conclude the future agenda items in our next regular city uh, council meeting will be held Tuesday, July 11th, um, 2017. Tomorrow. And tomorrow we have a closed session at 8 o'clock um, for um, city manager appointment. So with that, we'll... Um, okay, sorry. And so with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Hey, Scott.